It's 106.1 KISS FM, K-Man's Best Variety, Blake and Aaron Show, Whitney Houston, and Want to Dance with Somebody. Monday morning, 29th day of August 2022, 79 degrees right now. Real feel is the same. Humidity is 84%, but uh, cloudy this morning. And going to see a good chance of some rain today. We'll cover that forecast coming up in just a second. Right now, though, at 721. Big news. I have some important news for you. Interesting news. It's Blake and Darren's Spilling the Tea with Sandy. K-Man's top news headline. Blake and Darren's Spill. Happy Monday, Sandy. How are you? Hey, hey, good morning, Blake. How you doing? Good. Had a little, uh, had a few days off. Back at it this morning. Nice. Very yeah. nice. How was your weekend? It was all good. All good? Yes, sir. What do you got for us this morning? All right. So uh, a bit of breaking news over the weekend. Unfortunately, there was a tragic uh, motorcycle accident that resulted in the death of a young man who's 28 years old. Um, I heard that. That was actually, it was, it was a racing event, right? They were racing at uh, Breakers. Is that the, is that the case? Right. So um, that's correct. And he was coming into, from eyewitness accounts, the finish line when an accident happened. Oh, man. Yeah. So. And you know that when you're when they're racing, they're going at, at extremely fast down that track. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, that is really sure. sad to hear. Yeah, for sure. So um, we extend our condolences to um, obviously his family. He's had four kids. Oh, so man. very, very tragic loss. Do we know who it was? His name is Cashween McKenzie. Mm. He is actually um, a prison officer. Oh. Mm -hmm. So, um, everybody, all accounts, really nice guy. So, super sad day. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, yeah I mean, and, and, that, and that track is kind of, I mean, typically when you go to a racetrack, right, it's it, these people that are racing are professionals and trained people mm -hmm. uh, to, to go at these speeds. And, and this is an amateur racetrack. This is, um, you know, surprisingly, there's not there's not more incidents at you know at at the track when you have when you have amateurs out there racing at those kinds of speeds. So mm -hmm. I don't know how you, I don't know how you uh, have you know what safety measures you can put in place, or if there's if that's just the general risk when you go out there. Yeah, I believe it might be. Unfortunately. Mm -hmm. Um, and over the weekend, we also had um, the two-year-old child in Kim and Brack. She was, uh, her funeral was this weekend as well. So I remember about a month ago on the 27th of last month, um, she was found on the Iron Shore in Kim and Brack after going missing in the wee hours of the morning. <clears throat> right. So her funeral service was this weekend. Aww. So super sad day. Yeah. A lot of people are still, you know, saying that they need to hear more from the police. The police have just said that the investigation continues, essentially. Sabrina Douglas, big shout out to this young lady. She has made history by being the first um, Caymanian to travel to the Cayman Trench. So this is considered um, quite a feat, if you will, the Department of Environment. She works for them. And um, she made a journey in a submarine called the Alvin recently. Oh, cool. So, yeah, yeah, I know young how Sabrina. Far down is, how far down is it? Um, I know it's pretty deep, but I don't know how deep she actually went. And they find um, anything? I don't think anything unusual. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Or it was just it was, so dark down there that you couldn't see. Probably. Um, so it was a two hour journey and it's part of a research project with the uh, Woods Hole Oce Oceanographic Institution, uh, which is studying the deepest parts of the ocean. So this yeah. is pretty cool. And um, what's even more interesting about this story is that her dad wow. is a seafarer, John Douglas. He's my good friend, and I'm sure he's, like, super proud that he got to uh, witness his daughter doing this. The Cayman so, Trench is the deepest point in the Caribbean Sea, yep. coming in at a maximum depth of 25,216 oh feet. And yep. where, the, where the water at the bottom is near freezing temperatures. Wow. I'm pretty sure she didn't go down that far. <laughs> that is wild. 25. Yeah. Imagine, imagine uh, when you're flying in an airplane um, and looking down, that is how deep from where you are in the sky to the ground that that ocean is. That is incredible. Yeah. Pretty right? amazing. Mm. Yep. So Lots she loves, she loves Lots the water. So. Living down there probably. Um, yeah, she loves the water, so this is right in her element. Um, 
So yeah, a bit of history making. She said her dad is super proud of her as, as her mom, and I'm sure the rest of the family are as well. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's pretty cool. Okay, so um, in other news, there was a uh, concert on Friday, Dexter Daps. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think they were in your, <laughs> doing some research last night. I saw them in your studio over at Hot 104. Yes, they uh, came um, by for a little uh, interview. Yep, on yeah, the radio. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. So um, looks like the the um, performance was quite interesting and got a lot of people talking. So we're going to be talking about that uh, this morning oh, as well. I saw a post on your uh, on CMR. Mm -hmm. Was that um, was was uh, Dexter being assaulted with a pair of underwear? Is that what happened? Um, uh, yeah, some woman tried a thing, I suppose, but uh, he wasn't <laughs> having it. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, those kinds of things happen when you. When you have fans, they're called fans, which, by the way, is short for fanatic. Yeah, yeah. right, a lot right, of right. Forget Let's that. Remind yourselves. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So, our repairs are being done to the radar dome again, as we are awesome. looking at some potential weather. I know. Is that it not radar working right now? Makes me wonder. Yeah. Is it working or so, it's not working? It's kind of up and down. So they said that they were starting on Saturday, but even before they started the repairs for the past week or two, um, people have been monitoring it and sending in messages saying hey it's working this minute and then the next minute it's not working so no it's working and by the way um that's the rainfall that's about to come yes i was just about to say we're going to be getting some weather and there's several systems that our local weatherman uh, kevin watler is watching for us as well that's coming off the coast so there's a we lot of rain. the tropics have been pretty quiet thus far for the year and yeah, there's, um there's some things out there to keep an eye on it, yeah now it's september and of course you know september is normally the most active month and the month that we really have to keep an eye out for. Well, and hey, listen, we have three more days. Well, yes, well, three, uh, more days. Three, three more days. Three more days in my birthday month. Our birthday month, by the way. <clears throat> yes, yes, oh. yes. This is it. So let's um, not let's not leave our birthday month too soon. <laughs> too soon. <laughs> are, we, are we still celebrating? Yeah. Um. So yes, so that's a couple of systems out there to watch that could develop into something. So we'll be keeping you an eye and all of those things for you. So those are your news headlines on this beautiful Monday morning. All right, Sandy, uh, catch her show right now on Bobo 89.1 FM coming up just about two minutes, 730. And we'll catch you tomorrow for the Tuesday headlines. Thanks. Awesome. Have a good one. You too. Bye. Bye. So folks, Blake is still in the studio by himself. All right, let's get ready. <clears throat> Good morning. We are going to get ready here in just about 45 seconds. Ginger, beaver grass, or English. Get it ready. Your morning tea just got hotter. Ooh, honey child. On the cold hard truth, Bobo 89.1 and Cayman's number one talk show are bringing you morning talk like no one else. Monday Rewind, Impact Wednesdays, Caribbean Connections, and much more. Don't miss a beat with what's happening in the local community. Just keep sipping your tea. What a mess. Here's your host, live and direct from the Cayman Islands, Sandy Hill. All right. Good morning, beautiful people. Happy Monday, August the 29th. It's the last Monday of August. We got to get it, folks. This is it. As Blake just said, this is the end of August. Two more days um, in the month of August. Three if you count today. And then Thursday, September the 1st already. And in true tropical weather fashion, 
The tropics are starting to heat up a little bit. So please make sure that you tune in every evening to get your evening weather and news updates with Kevin Wattler. He's keeping an eye on the tropics. Big shout out to Home Gas, who has sponsored the Storm Watch uh, this year. So Heather, um, Heather, uh, Kevin is going to be keeping a very, very keen eye on. We've got multiple systems that are now being watched with one, I think, or two, uh, probably favorable for further development. Mm. So as we know, thus far, it's actually been relatively quiet. I have not heard, and Kevin can certainly correct me if I'm wrong, <clears throat> but I've not heard of any developments that have even been named yet. Have we used up any names in the tropics yet, Kevin? Uh, we'll check in with him a little bit later on to see um, exactly what's going on. But yeah, it's been super, super quiet. And now it's starting to kick into a completely different gear. So good morning to everyone. How are you guys doing this beautiful Monday morning? Uh, it looks like we're in for some rainy weather. Um, the radar, uh, Blake just said that it's up, but I'm aware because you guys keep telling me that it is up and down and round and round and all over the place. So um, we shall keep an eye on that situation there as well. Um, so we'll see. Mm. They did announce that they were making some repairs over the weekend to the dome of the um, of the radar. And I don't know what's going on, but this radar continues to have issues. I think about a week or so, um, you know, after months of not being up closer to a year, it was finally uh, serviced and restored in June. And um, then they said that there were additional repairs in July. And it's kind of been not the most, uh, you know, <laughs> really not the most reliable since then. So maybe they are still aware of something. Um, uh, 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 uh. Yeah, so we'll, we'll keep an eye on that. Obviously, it's helpful if we have a radar that's working so that we can know exactly what's happening in our local vicinity. Mm -hmm. All right, um, good morning to, let's see who we've got locked on this morning. Diamond Princess is here. She says, happy new week. Be safe. Dion is in the house. Carmelie says, good morning. I'm not going to miss anything today. Happy Monday and hope you all um, be blessed and have a safe week. Yes. <clears throat> Speaking of missing stuff. Uh, if you missed Friday's show, my goodness, based on the response that I received, Friday's show was definitely a hit. Ooh, la, la. Mm, mm, mm. I had messages left, right, center up, down, and all around, uh, well into the weekend about Friday's show. So a lot of people um, enjoyed Friday's show. It was, they said, in the opinion of some people, um, uh, you know, that it was the best show that I've ever had, which is saying a lot. Um, I don't think that's necessarily true, but I do think it was a very, very good show. Uh, it's hard to single out any one particular show as the best show because you know we all have you know we like shows for different reasons I suppose but it was it was definitely um a lot of truth telling and um you know we were delving in case you missed it you can go back and watch it on YouTube or Facebook we were delving into some of the details of why um Mr. Jude Scott resigned as chairman of Cayman Airways. And the good news is we're going to put up the letter a little bit later on so that you can read the letter for yourselves. And I think it's it's very um, enlightening to be able to actually see his words and see how he described everything. So we'll put that up a bit later on today with um, a story that goes along with it as well. Oh boy, what can I say? Marshall, good morning. Good morning to uh, Felicia. Tommy is in the house. Good morning, brother Tommy. Sujit says, good morning. The Cayman Trench is about 25,000 feet, which is about 7,600 meters deep. Wonder how deep she went. Um, yes, uh, perhaps we could get her on the show and find out. Hmm. We'll invite her on. Like I said, her dad, oh my gosh, John Douglas is well in his 80s now, and he is just as sharp as he could possibly be. My good friend dating back many, many years. Uh, Damaris is joining us from Queens, New York. Um, Carmody says that I'm glowing. What's going on? I don't know. 
I'm not too sure. Maybe it's my repaired coat of arms necklace that has me glowing. Big shout out to David <laughs> over at Prodigy Jewelers. I told you guys I found it. Uh, the pendant had somehow come off and I found it and I took it in and right away he repaired it for me. Um, but you guys know David. He was already working on something special, extra special for me as a replacement. He's just the best. Um, but I don't know what's going on. Glowing extra, extra glowing this morning? I don't even know. I haven't even put on my, my moisturizer yet, so I'm not sure what explains the glow, but we'll get that going. Uh, Chris, good morning. Chris says, this is going to be good. Oh, Chris, I know why you're here this morning. A few of you logged on because we're going to be talking about this Dexter Dapp situation over the weekend. Meh. Oh, Lord. Why do y'all like me to, to, to really have to uh, address these things? Ugh. We could be just having a nice granny show over here, competing with some of our friends on another station. Instead, y'all want to be all turned up on a Monday morning, talking about this is going to be good. <laughs> Chris, uh, what can I say? Uh, I'll give it to you if that's what you want. Um, Iva, good morning to you. So good to see you. Yes, pl please be careful on the roadway. It's already wet this morning. Um, and y'all know you can't drive even in the best of conditions, much less a little bit of rain. So slow down. Uh, use your indicators. You know, the last time I was in Miami, folks, I saw a um, sign on the on the interstate. I don't know if it was I-75, Tucson, I don't even know. One of those interstates. And it said, you know how they have the overhead, big neon signs. It said, use your, in your um, indicator. It's the law. And I'm like, is it? Because a lot of people seem to think it's optional to use your indicator. <clears throat> but I don't know what it came out, but in the States, it is the law, was what the sign said. So use your indicator. So when you're turning and you're changing lanes and, you know, let people know, even if it's not the law, it's such good common sense to let people know um, exactly what it is that you're doing. So, yes, if you're going to change lanes, use that indicator. In the roundabout, sometimes people don't know kind of where you're going in the roundabout. Use your indicator. Good morning, Miss Charlene. Leslie is here. She says, Queen Scorpio Kelly. I hear you. KY, KY in the house. Good morning, Debbie. She says, I love August, but I want to go um, on to the best month. <laughs> oh, must be her birthday. <clears throat> the only month. That spell best is September. Have a wonderful day. I hear you, Debbie. So which day is your birthday, may I ask? Um, <clears throat> yes, Miss Charlene, we're going to get into that here in a second. Good morning to Richard. Uh, Modester is here. Good morning to you, John. First Lady, uh, Jan has got it locked. Miss Morna from Prospect. Ah, so um, good morning, Scott. Miss Norma, Melita, Sanya. Good morning to Sanya. So let's get into a few hot topics this morning. Lulu is here. Uh, Lynette, Ignacia. Wow, lots of people locked on. Already 270 in the live stream. We're going to go well over 400, I'm pretty sure. Um, Cernicula? Yes. Oh, Cheryl. You got your first name last. Your last name first. Uh, yes, Cheryl says, good morning, Miss Sanya. and Paji. Yes. We just gave David a big shout out. Um, so, you know, Miss Sanya, I actually don't wear any makeup um, other than lipstick in the morning, but this is a filter that I put on. I'm not ashamed to say that I'm using modern technology to look good. So it's a filter that, um, where's my back scratcher, by the way? It's a filter, yes, that makes me look good every single morning. And then I don't have to worry about putting on any makeup because that would take me more time in the mornings that I just don't have. So it saves me a lot of time, but I appreciate it. Um, Levana says, yes, you really look nice today. Really? What's going on? Maybe it's the, I don't know what it is. What's different today? I don't know. Nothing. Glasses the same. I've worn this dress before. But anyway, take the compliments as they come. All right. Alice, Catherine, Jonathan is here. Um, he's asking, is it just my video? Or is your audio a second off from your video? Um, sometimes that does happen. And I find that on your end, if you refresh, you should be a okay. Um, so I'm not sure, but I know on Facebook, especially on Facebook, sometimes Facebook can have a little bit of a syncing issue where it doesn't precisely sync up. Mm -hmm. Morning to Andrea. Jackie's got it locked here. Um, 
Melita says, I'm seeing what you're seeing also. Mm. All right. So let's do our Monday Rewind. It is Monday. Happy Monday, everyone. You know what that means. Time for Monday Rewind. <laughs> the Cold Heart Troops Monday Rewind show recaps the weekend's news and events so you don't miss a beat. Don't miss out. All the weekend source news, gossip, and well, it wouldn't be a weekend recap show without traffic accidents, too. <laughs> Cayman Marl Road is Cayman's number one news source and has the island's hottest morning talk show. It's the hottest. Make sure you don't miss a beat with Monday Rewind. <laughs> Rewind. Tune in every Monday from 7.30 a.m. on both YouTube and Facebook. All right, folks, uh, welcome back. So we're going to talk about what happened over the weekend. Thank you so much, Elizabeth. So first of all, um, there was the Dexter Dapp, Dexter Dapps show on Friday. We'll come back to that in a minute because uh, that's going to take a minute to explain. Mm, mm, mm. Um, but in any event, we also have um, uh, the usual traffic accidents. So, you know, Saturday morning, people were sending me a couple um there was one by Bobby Thompson, which is a hot spot, as we well know, and a couple others. So nothing incredibly serious that I could see, unfortunately, until yesterday. So yesterday we had a young man, and we want to extend our condolences to his entire family. His name is Cashween uh, McKenzie. He's a racing enthusiast, it appears. And um, yeah, he was at the Parker's Raceway in Bodden Town yesterday afternoon when unfortunately he had an accident on his bike at the finish line and sadly did not recover from that. When I first got the message that he had crashed, I was hopeful that it was going to be um, one of these things that, um, you know, he would have recovered from because the person said, oh, you know, he was unconscious. And then they're like, oh, they thought he had just come come through. I don't think he ever really gained consciousness. I think what happened is there was a physician at the location and apparently he, the physician, you know, kind of opened his eyes and he had some serious concerns that, um, you know, he was having some sort of internal bleeding in his head. Mm. So, you know, how incredibly serious that can be. So I just happened to have been on the road around the same time that all of this, um, I was home and then I left out and the ambulance passed me on Linford Pearson uh, being escorted by an EMS vehicle. I didn't know they had EMS trucks that did stuff like what, what else did they do other than escort an ambulance? Uh, that was the first time I've ever seen that. But they were escorting the ambulance, which is good because sometimes you don't always hear an ambulance. Um, you know, your your eyes and your your ears kind of operate differently. And uh, you don't really hear as far out as you think you do, which is kind of interesting. But a lot of people don't know how to get off the road. And depending on where the ambulance comes, like if it's one lane, it is a little bit more challenging to, to maneuver out of the way. But I actually saw them in my rearview mirror coming um, from quite a distance. And so I made sure that I pulled off um, on the side and, you know, just gave them an entire lane that they could try to rush him to the hospital as quickly as possible. Before he even reached the hospital, there were people there who were giving us updates that his mom was there. And then I think other family members started to arrive shortly after. They were actually at the hospital before he even arrived. And of, of course, you know, if your mother and you hear that your child has been in a serious accident, you know um, that the worst is possible. And, um, you know, even before he arrived at the hospital, she was, you know, um, probably just besides herself and what people, what eyewitnesses shared. And so when he got there, it wasn't looking good. People were saying that, um, you know, they were trying to perform CPR on him, which again, probably meant that he went into some sort of cardiac arrest. And unfortunately, he did not make it. So left behind four children. Uh, they look relatively young. And so um, our condolences are extended to his entire family. For a minute there, I couldn't 
place who he was. Like I was trying to figure out, you know, the Cayman Islands is such a peculiar and unique place in the sense that once someone has passed away, normally within 15 to 25 minutes, if I haven't heard who the individual is, then uh, like who they are and who their family is, um, it probably means that they're not a Caymanian. With this young man, it was a little bit different. It took a, it didn't take long to hear a name, but nobody could place like who he was related to. And then there was a couple of people who were like, oh, he's John John's stepson. I was like, John John who? Um, Dwayne Seymour John John? They were like, yeah. And I was like, mm, I don't think John John could have a stepson that old um at that age so that didn't really make any sense and then as it turns out he does have a stepfather whose name is also Dwayne Seymour but it's not Dwayne Seymour the politician there's more than one Dwayne Seymour so um he's not John John's stepson so let me just clarify that we sent that out on our whatsapp news group because people I think are very confused by them both having uh basically the same name right so different John John or different Dwayne Seymour I should say um, I don't know if the other one goes by John John or not, but not Dwayne Seymour, a.k.a. John John, the politician, not him. So um, he's from Frank Sound area, and um, he was also a uh, prison officer. So I'm sure that um, his prison workers, uh, co-workers, you know, are feeling this loss as well this morning. So I understand that his stepfather yeah so kk says he's a trucking man and bus driver someone said he was a fire he's a fireman as well i don't know um so we definitely extend our condolences to um cash Wayne's family i understand the bike was re a relatively new bike that he got earlier in the month and he was really, really excited to get it on the roadway you know i don't know what more to say about the situation except that it seems like it was just a tragic situation <clears throat> and he, at the fish, finish line, somehow lost control of the bike. Um, we do have someone who wrote in some comments. One of the questions I had was, um, I was really curious whether or not they maintain ambulance service at the, um, if they maintain ambulance service at the, road at the racetrack when they're having uh, like an event. And I'm told that they don't. One of the other <clears throat> enthusiasts said no, that they've been told that in the event that something happens, then they simply call and they'll make themselves available. And this is probably one of those things where they don't have enough ambulatory services to stay at that location, but it is kind of weird. Um, you know, <laughs> how many ambulances do we have now? Is it three or four? You know, we should have one place out in the Eastern Districts, I would think, at all times. In any event, uh, when I got to the top of the Harkwell Bypass, I saw another ambulance that was coming from off of the Harkwell, the West Bay direction. So I'm assuming that one was being redirected more to the Eastern area of the island. So let me read a few um, comments here in relation to this. So this is a, a writer who's an enthusiast as well. So they said, um, I saw that you posted the story about Cash Wayne's fatal accident today and wanted to uh, give you my perspective for what it's worth, since no doubt you will hear the typical public outcry about how dangerous racing is, et cetera. FYI, I'm not involved in the organization that runs the track, but I am a racer and I've been intimately involved in this sport for the last 35 plus years. This was indeed a tragic death of a popular young man, um, a popular young raising enthusiast, and I do not want to seem to downplay that. I was at the event waiting to make a run myself, although I didn't see what happened, but spoke to many people who saw it from different angles, including the finish line, which is uh, where it happened, unfortunately. Based on what a number of people said to me, and this is only hearsay, it seems that due to either mechanical fault or driver error for some reason, the bike either didn't slow down or it actually sped up after the finish line when it should have been slowing down. And then it went into a high speed wobble and he couldn't control the bike and it somehow threw him off violently into the air and off the track into the bushes. A complete freak accident like nothing I've ever heard of. Obviously, uh, the police are now investigating and as expected, the event had to be shut down. 
but I'm hoping that they will get it right. And in the meanwhile, the public will not wind themselves up too badly about how dangerous racing is. So from my perspective, here are some facts to consider. Number one, to the best of my knowledge and belief, this is the first time in Cayman's history that we've had a fatal crash of a racer at a sanctioned or managed event. Over the years, we've had many different racing clubs who have collectively run hundreds, if not thousands of events over the last 40 plus years. We've had crashes, both cars and motorcycles, but no serious injuries and not a fatality. We did have the one fatal motorcycle crash at a racing event in East End years ago, but the guy was not a racer and he actually recklessly and without authority entered the race area at a high speed, narrowly missing me and then serving, swerving, I think that was supposed to be, from another race car and then lost control and crashed into CUC pole, unfortunately killing himself in the process. Number two, today's crash occurred during qualifying and Cash Wayne was running on the track by himself in a controlled environment and he had actually completed his run before he lost control of the bike number three he was wearing all the appropriate safety gear helmet race suit and boots and his bike had to undergo and pass a technical inspection to be certified as being fit to race number four all events of the breakers uh, raceway are properly managed by the racing organizers in accordance with strict safety rules which have been adopted from long established reputable organizations in the US. The officials and technical inspectors are very strict about compliance uh, with these rules, which they have in fact just enhanced in July. Trust me, a lot of us racers weren't happy that we had to comply, but we all understand the reason for such rules. So with apologies for the long message, I just wanted to share the foregoing with you. Feel free to publish um, it in part or entirely. Again, this isn't a statement from the organizers. It's just my own perspective as an avid racer who is deeply saddened by the loss of a brother racer who wouldn't want his legacy to be tarnished by the type of baseless uh, vitriolic, uh, vitriolic, sorry, vitriolic, yes, commentary that this sort of event can attract from people who feel they need to speak out before first learning the facts. And uh, so that was a comment that came in yesterday evening after the event, um, after the tragic situation. So, um, yeah, so I don't, I mean, I think that there's an inherent risk in it in a lot of different things you do. And certainly racing, um, is one of those things that comes with a risk, you know? Yeah. Whether you're on a track or not, uh, we see professional racers, and I mean, these guys, I'm sure, are not considered professional racers, but we do see professional racers in the U.S. track and um, uh, in the U.S. crash on occasion, and sometimes that ends horribly wrong. So these things happen, and I suppose if you're into um, racing, you have to take it as one of the potential things that can happen. So all we can do at this point is extend our condolences to his family. Um, I'm sure an investigation now will be undertaken by the authorities. Hopefully they can examine the bike to see if it was a mechanical failure, if something went wrong with the bike. You know, a lot of these guys um, bring their bikes in and they work really hard to even raise the money for these bikes and, um, you know, get them road uh, or race ready. And so it's, it's a machine folks. And, you know, at the end of the day, when you're on a bike, you have very little, um, you have very little protection other than your helmet. And sometimes that's just not enough. Just like in a car, the seatbelt may not be enough to to save you. So good morning to Miss Lucille. She says, I love your top. You always uh, wear lovely tops. And this today is actually a dress, believe it or not. So thank you. Um, uh, Her birthday is coming up on the 6th of September. All right. Very good. KK says something needs to be done with these situations, et cetera, at Health City. All right, so let's talk about this because I did see um, some people, Shannon is also saying the same thing, that Health City should be able to accept emergencies to save lives. Um, so this is what I want to say. I saw that comment in the um, in the online conversations as well. And in fact, Health City does have emergency services. So Rachel DaCosta commented, She said, why in the world would they go all the way to Georgetown when Health City has amazing facilities and surgeons for spinal, bone, heart, heart, et cetera, and are right there in East End? What a tragedy. So um, to clarify this position, um, 
you know, which I think is, is critical so that we're all on the same page in terms of what the real story is, Health City does have emergency services. And um, I understand that they've been advocating for years for accidents in the East to come to them as time is often of the essence. This is something that hasn't been done. I guess 911 decides where to send people. And my understanding is they always send these emergency cases to the HSA. Um, so this is a policy decision by the Cayman Islands government. It's, it's one of those legacy things where, you know, there were no emergency services in the Eastern District until Health City came about. And so nothing has changed from the perspective of emergency services, although it's available at Health City. Every single second counts. So imagine if he was having bleeding on the brain, folks, and um, you had to drive him all the way from East End to Georgetown Hospital. There's no way you can do all the speed you want. But of course, ambulance drivers have a responsibility to drive safely, right? And I believe that they even have an obligation to still drive within the speed limits. They're, they're not able to exceed the speed limits. That being the case, there's no way that you can get from um, East End, the speed, the Parker's Raceway to um, Georgetown Hospital. I would garnish to say, or garner to say, um, in no less than if you really encountered no traffic, maybe 40 minutes. What do y'all think? I'm not the best at, at speeds calculations, but it's going to be. 35 to probably 45 minutes. And you could have gotten to Hell City. That's what, a five minute ride from this parkway. So I do think that maybe the lesson that comes out of this is that the government needs to reevaluate this policy. Um, Hell City has an ICU. They're the only other hospital to the best of my knowledge that actually has um, an ICU on island um, that is on par with, you know, they can take all sorts of emergencies, then maybe the government needs to really, really consider sending people there. It seems a bit non, it just seems crazy to me, nonsensical, to make them go half an hour plus drive um, instead of taking them five minutes away. So good morning to Miss Darlene. Good morning to Louis. Miss Beulah is here. Um, Charlene says an ambulance could be stationed at the Frank Sound Fire Station or Bodentown Clinic, just saying. Yes, absolutely. But if that ambulance is still having to go all the way to Georgetown Hospital, um, to me, that's that's a problem. Uh, Ms. Darlene says just waking up uh, in a risky, just, Sandy, just waking up is a risky, oh, okay, just waking up is risky. Sending my condolences. Uh, yes, I mean. I wouldn't say waking up is risky, but <laughs> obviously if you wake up, then there's a possibility you may die at some point because death comes for all of us. Um, I don't know that waking up inherently has any risk, except that everybody has to die at some point. But yes, I mean, there's, listen, there's things that we do um, all the time that come with risk. Some of us smoke, we drink, we do all kinds of stuff that come with some degree of risk and risk is certainly something that can be um, quantified as some things are riskier in life than others. So the KK is asking the same question, why don't they start diverting to Health City? Again, KK, from the best of what we can understand, this is just a policy decision. The Cayman Islands government does own the hospital, obviously. And, um, you know, a lot of things are difficult to change. Uh, well, we just call it a legacy, you know, people enjoy. Um, something always having been that way. And people don't often think about, well, why are we, why are we not changing it until something like this tragically happens? So good morning to Emma. Dominique says it's all about the money. I mean, it should be all about saving lives. Louis says protection of bike is limited to your skill and the environment around you and the personal protection equipment you wear, helmet, gloves, boots. And he was fully equipped, but you know, unfortunately, sometimes those things do not offer you enough protection. 
We saw some uh, weeks back that we had another bike rider who was on the road. It was not at a racing event and he lost control of his bike as well. And um, my understanding uh, in that particular case is he lost a portion of his leg. Um, we have reached out to him and he's doing okay. Um, very, very positive and determined, um, you know, to just really uh, come through this. He's, you know, started some therapy and he's got two young boys that he has to really just hang in there for. So these situations can can be very, very challenging at best. Um, even if you don't have a loss of life, if you lose a limb or other things, you know, these are life changing events. So, um, you know, these guys get the experience that they get by going out there and being on their bikes. And I guess that's the only way to get experience. And we have had some very, very tragic um, situations over the years. And that person said that they can't recall there ever being a death at an official like racing event. So there's certainly something to be said for that because again, it's inherently riskier than other things. So I think, you know, it seems like these guys are relatively safe um, when they're on the raceway, on the racetrack, but just a tragic situation. So Ms. Darlene says more education and bike riding is needed. Sasha says, what kind of deal is that? Health City had all of these concessions granted by the government, but we're not able to assist the public at the time, but they're not able. So um, Sasha, I don't think this is a situation where they're not able to do it. This is a situation where the government has to um, provide that option. So they can't tell 911 where to send patients. Um, and they certainly can't tell, uh, you know, change government policy on their own. So this is not them not wanting to take people. They stand by and they're ready, but there has to be a policy change. <laughs> so if you feel a way about this, uh, contact your health minister. Perhaps she's even listening to the program this morning and uh, let her know that, especially if you live in one of the districts on the Eastern districts, that you would like the option for an emergency um, situation to be diverted to Health City, even if it's the government ambulance and the call is going through um, 911. I'm aware that uh, Health City has, I think they have a ambulance, they have their own ambulatory um, service as well, so they can actually send out an ambulance service <clears throat> to collect people. So it probably means, you know, <laughs> policy change, uh, speaking with 911, if a call comes in, and it's from this location out east. Um, we're going to call instead of calling the A and E at, um, you know, I don't know how they patch into the hospital, but instead of calling them, you call Health, Health City. You check in the availability of their ambulance, and um, you know if it's available, they come pick the person up and they take the person there. So, I think it just really is uh, a policy change that has to occur. And I'm glad that you mentioned the concession, Sasha, because that is something that we will be addressing a bit later on the week, probably on Wednesday. Some of you may have heard that there was a lawsuit um, that came out. It wasn't actually against Health City, but they were listed as an interested party. So we will hopefully have a representative from Health City on the show on Wednesday. And we're going to go through the lawsuit and actually see what the judge said. And uh, we'll talk about that. I don't want to get into it right now, but there's a lot to unpack and to discuss. So good morning to Miss uh, Anita. She says, oh, oh, hello, Morna, all the way from Rotan, sending my love, uh, blessed Cayman Islands, and protect and guide everyone. Thank you so much. <clears throat> um, so Louis says, risk is a parent on a bike. Um, yes, so I think there's some general consensus that there needs to be some changes in relation to this. So another person says, um, also have to consider travel time from HSA to breakers in the first place. Yes. And of course, you know, basically you're looking at probably an hour round trip if the ambulance was at the hospital. And I don't know where the ambulance came from. Uh, they did say that an ambulance is stationed at Northside Clinic, which is also very uh, far away. So it would be interesting. Um, yeah. So this person said, it's been my experience that first responders have gone to HSA if the person is deceased on the scene. They work it as a code, but not really a code. So you're saying that if they believe that the person's going to be dead on arrival, that they just send them to HSA? Mm. 
Well, I don't think they have an arrangement to send them anywhere else is a problem. But uh, that's interesting. Does anybody else have a morgue other than the HSA, by the way? There's a lot of like little details that I'm afraid I'm not entirely familiar with when it comes to these hospitals and stuff. But we're going to learn some of this stuff coming up on Wednesday show. So Nat- Natasha, is the H silent? Natasha says, yeah, three hospitals and only only GT hospital can take people in emergency incidents. It's crazy. Yet another hospital building. And what will be the change for a fourth? Mm-hmm. It's it's a question that the minister needs to answer. I mean, yeah, looks like it's time for a change. Uh, Romelia, good morning. Tracy's here joining us from New Zealand, wee hours in the morning. And Miss Morna says hi to her friend from Rotan. All right, so um, nothing more, unfortunately, we can say about that. Uh, we will chase up the minister for a response. And in fact, I am curious to know what the overall transport time would have been for the ambulance. So let's see if we can ask the question from 911. I, you know, I hate putting in FOI requests. Um, many people, there's somebody who used to do like a lot of FOI requests. I don't know who it was. And people, they were going under some pseudonym or something, some fake name. And a lot of people thought it was me. And I was like, why would I do an FOI request? I said, honestly, it's one of the things that I probably detest uh, more about my job than anything else is having to put an FOI request because they take their bloody time responding to you. The FOI system is broken. It doesn't really work uh, particularly well. And I'll tell you what, <laughs> the people that you send the FOI request to really take their time in getting you the information. They will draw it out like, I don't know what. I thought the um, sort of intent of the FOI law is that if someone requested information from you and you had it readily available and you could just answer the bloody question, there was no need to say, oh, wait 30 days for a response. Like if I if I message you and you say, okay, two minutes for us to check the record to see the transport time, you know, going in either direction, why would you turn around and be like, oh yeah, we'll get back to you in 30 days? That's just pure laziness on the part of these FOI people that work for government. I, I gotta be honest with you. I'm not impressed, and I hope the deputy governor is listening this morning. I'm not really impressed with how they treat the FOIs that come in, how they treat the FOI law. Um, The last administration, the progressives watered it down um, from its original intent. So they put additional, you know, parameters in place that really almost make it completely useless. And that is why, to be quite frank and honest, most of the time I don't put in an FOI if I don't have to. That's why also the civil servants who want me to know something will just give me the information and bypass the entire FOI system because it just doesn't work very well. And then you request it, it's like, oh, we gotta redact all this information and it's gonna take forever. I'm like, eh, mm, mm, mm. nobody ain't got time for that, honey, do you know? So I don't, um, I find it kind of interesting when someone thought that I was whoever this, I can't remember what the suit name was, this person who was like, they would always ask for FOI stuff. I'm like, I don't have that kind of time or interest to be FOIing everything under the sun. Because really and truly, one, two little phone calls and I can find out what I need to find out. Mm-hmm. And I can't bother with no FOI. Good morning, Debbie. Joining us from the beautiful uh, state of New Jersey. How are you? Um, so let's see if we can find out this information without going through the laborious process of putting in an FOI and having to wait two months to get the information. Ridiculous. All right, moving on. Monday Rewind. Good morning, everyone. Happy Monday. So the other tragic event over the weekend was the burial of little Alyssa. Um, Let me get her correct name. I keep calling her Alyssa, but it's Alicity Um, Azalea Powell. She's a toddler, two years old, and she was laid to rest on Saturday, uh, almost a month to the day that she was found um, deceased in Cayman Brack. So we had put up the story about, you know, her um, burial. And I saw someone send me a message saying, do you think it's time? Can we arrange a protest? And, um, you know, I thought to myself, we have done a show on this. We've been asking the police to say something. Last week they responded. And all they basically said is the investigations continue. 
And if you have anything that can help them to let them know, they just don't get it. There's there's something going on at the RCAPS from a public relations perspective that they just don't get. If you want to have the public help you and you want to engage the public, even in a situation like this, I don't know how much the public can help you with this one, but responding to our question or second email to you saying, hey, anything that you can tell us? By saying, oh, the investigations continue, but if you know something, let us know. It's just like, that doesn't do it, right? I don't know. I don't even know what to say. But poor little Elicity um, was laid to rest. I know a lot of people traveled to Cayman Brac uh, for the service. She um, had gotten out of her house in the early morning hours of July 26 and then went missing. So this entire debate uh, ensued once we posted this request for an, a, a protest, right? So someone said they would like um, for protests to happen. And they were asking us to lead the charge. Now, I don't know that we need to lead the charge, but I think, you know, if you guys are interested in protesting, then it can certainly be done. There were some of you who said, and I found this incredibly interesting, and I must tell you that I do not agree with this position, but some of you said, this is nobody's business but the family. And that we need to mind our own business. There was some lady named Dot Hislop who said essentially that we need to mind our own business and uh, this matters for the family. This is not for public consumption. And the response that some of you, some of you are very much in agreement. I'm like, mm, this actually doesn't make any sense. First of all, any anyone that dies in a community um, that is the subject of an investigation, suspicious investigation, sudden death investigation, whatever, uh, those types of things are of public interest. And this is a public interest because a child is involved. And it's quite ironic that the public was involved at the point when the child went missing. Y'all wanted the public's help then. Uh, so at that point, it was a public matter. But now that she's found dead and the public finds a whole situation around her death to be highly suspicious, and they're making a lot of comments all of a sudden, it's now a private matter and people should not be asking the police for an update. They shouldn't be demanding a better response from the police. How can that be? But, you know, this is typical Caymanian, um, you know, ridiculousness, if you ask me. So one person said, oh, we just being fast and being in people's business. And I'm like, the child went missing. And it wasn't being fast when we were out there trying to help the child, right? We literally sat here and got the news, broke it here on this platform, that she had been found on the Iron Shore. It was a horrific moment to even hear that information online. I must tell you, every time I think about it, it makes me extremely upset. But this mentality in the Cayman Islands that we have, oh, people are fast and, you know, it's, that's the same type of mentality that keeps people in abusive relationships. It's the exact same mentality that allows people to get away with sexually molesting their family members and others. Oh, that's not my business. I don't, I don't want to be fasting. We all fast and everything else that sometimes legitimately is in your business. So, I mean, I don't agree that this is a situation of anybody fasting. I think the people need an answer. And quite frankly, I don't care how many of you get offended by the fact that we're asking for the police to step up and provide a little bit more information. If this was just a tragic accident and the child really did walk out at 4.30 in the morning a mile by herself, and that is their determination that she drowned, then hello, just let us know that so we can all move on. But it doesn't quite seem like that's probably gonna be the outcome a month later if y'all are still investigating. I mean, by now we should have all sorts of tests that are in. There are rumors of no water being in her lungs, no cuts on her feet, so she couldn't have been walking on the Iron Shore. I mean, there's just so many information that has been put into the rumor mill. That part of it, people are fasting because they haven't been told anything. They don't know anything. So, of course, it's natural for people to be curious and to wonder and, you know, for that rumor mill to probably kick up a little bit. And in lieu of a statement, that's exactly what you're encouraging. If the police would just come out and say, listen, um, our investigations have shown that there's nothing suspicious here and no one's going to be arrested. Put, the, put it to bed.
But by you saying nothing and the, oh, the investigation continues, that's all you can say. And asking the people to come forward if they know anything, why would we need to come forward unless there was more to this than meets the eye? Let me remind you of the telephone number, 936-2626, if you have any thoughts on anything that we've covered so far this morning. Please feel free um, to call into the program. So, so yeah, I'm, I mean, I'm a little bit perplexed. And um, quite frankly, you know, I don't really see, um, I don't really see what the issue is here with people wanting to know what has transpired in this situation. This is a tragic loss, obviously for her family. But since one of the people, and I saw her mother apparently made some comment on Facebook, because or I don't know if it was Facebook or Instagram, but the mother appears to be incapable of staying off of social media, uh, even on, on the day that her daughter is being buried. Uh, she went and created a second account from what I've been told. Um, and evidently she, you know, went and made some comments. What I would say to her is, lady, in all honesty, you are not mother of the century. You are not mother of the decade. And you certainly were not mother of the year. I think we can all agree to that much. This is going to be a moment of truth telling. If y'all don't want to hear it, change the station to somebody else who's going to tell you a lie or go easy on you. We've heard, young lady, about your alleged drug use and other behavior, your horrible parenting, going to bars and leaving the children locked in the car on iPads. Reason why you don't have the other kids? We've heard the stories. So if you want to alleviate anyone even having anything to say about your daughter, maybe you're the one who should make a statement because your story seems to have shifted from the original story of how it all went down, changing a diaper, this, that, and the next thing. Um, and then finding her minutes later and then the timeline shifted. So maybe what you should do is since the police aren't going to do it, um, you know, and this is also something that's very, very normal in other jurisdictions. It's normal for police to make a statement when a child is found in conditions like this. And it's also quite normal for the parents to make a statement. Mm hmm. Mm. Maybe some people don't want to make a statement because when they go on record and, you know, arrest and prosecution starts to come knocking at their door, all of a sudden it's like, oh, yeah, but you said X, Y, Z. And, you know, but there's a lot of um, I got to tell you, there's a lot of stories about her being afraid to speak up because who might have been involved in what happened to this child and all sorts of foolishness. And I can't imagine that your child is dead and you'd be afraid of anything in your life except that her spirit should haunt you every single night that you try to close your eyes if you know what happened to this child and you're not speaking up. So whatever happened here, I think the community wants answers. The community deserves answers. And so does the rest of the family because this young uh, child has, you know, a father and grandparents who I'm sure want to know what the real story is, what the truth is. And one thing I know about the truth, you can try to bury it but it's not going to be married forever. So we know that her um, mother's boyfriend was arrested uh, recently in Grand Cayman for cocaine possession. And there have been lots of stories and speculation swirling about maybe the poor baby got into some drugs and had an accidental overdose or something. And then somebody was just trying to cover that up. These rumor mills, you know, people don't be fasting. The fasting will continue until we get some real answers. Okay. So you want to stop the fasting, as somebody said in, on Facebook? Then put, tell us what the truth is. The best way to control fasting is with facts. Facts cancel out fasting. Simple as that. The only people that can give us the facts are the people who were there and the police. Because their investigations might have revealed something. So Perla says, what tools or techniques are the RCIPS using in this investigation? Well, they brought in, as they mentioned to us, a number of specialists, um, including they sent five um, forensic, was it forensic specialists to the BRAC? So um, they have said that, let me just see here. Um, so they launched a sudden death investigation and they would have sent numerous, uh, let me just see how many, I think they said five, 
detectives, including a pathologist, um, to Cayman Brack. Yeah, so they sent five police investigators supported by forensic specialists and a pathologist. And they were sent the day after on Wednesday, July the 27th to support the local team with the case. And um, that's been a, over a month and we've not heard a single word. Um, so Perla says, what holds them up to finish investigating the case? Most are never reopened for justice. So what is the issue? Or are they short of staff? Well, we've heard no updates. So we have no way of knowing. So Rennie is also having this issue with our feed. Uh, Rennie says the audio is coming through faster than the video. And it looks like it's just happening on Facebook. So I tell you what, let's take a little commercial break. And what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to refresh the feed because I do find um, that sometimes that will actually help. So let me do that. Crichton Properties is one of Cayman's most trusted real estate companies for over 50 years. We offer a diverse selection of property listings and help our clients navigate the world of buying or selling their properties with confidence. Crichton is a name you can trust with our excellent customer service and family-friendly touch. Contact us today to list your home, land, or condo for sale by calling 949-5250 or email info at crichtonproperties.com. Dot com. Crichton Properties, a trusted Cereba member. All right, hopefully that helps, Rennie. Um, that's the most that we can do on this end. So now if need be, refresh your feed and then hopefully, hopefully that will sort out that issue. So yeah, if it's more than one person having it, it's probably um, a bit of uh, just lag that's happening on the line. Let me um let me just do a quick speed test, but I think our speeds are okay this morning. And then I noticed it's only happening on, on Facebook as well. So big shout out to Flo. We got some super fast speeds over here. Um mm -hmm. yep, pushing over 800 megabits per second. We got that one gigabit plan. Uh gone over to 900, 930, 945. Yes. All good, 953.9. The upload is a little bit slow though. Hmm, the upload is supposed to be 500 and we're getting 82 out of 500. Hmm, interesting. Um, but even with 82, y'all shouldn't be seeing any sort of lag, but let me, um, let me reach out to somebody on this. I'll send this to my in-house tech guru, AKA hubby for him to check the upload speeds. Cause yeah, we should be getting like 500 in the upload. And for our purposes, five, the upload does make a difference. So that does Im impact. We're not too concerned about the download speed. It's the upload that makes a difference for us. But I'll send this to him, but still, even that shouldn't make much of a difference. Thanks Chuck, he's just confirming that the radio sounds really, really good. Um, so some additional comments coming in. Rumors, the mother admitted to strangling her. Mother has attempted suicide twice. Saturday at the Alexander Hotel, an ambulance was called to the location. Um, I mean, I don't know. So there's been a lot of rumors um, about the fact that, you know, they were waiting until after the service to arrest her. I don't know. <laughs> Why would you wait? Like, what, what's the point of waiting? If, if she had anything to do with it, I don't understand that. You wait because what you're trying to give her some degree of courtesy for being involved in something with her own child. Like to me, that's illogical. So I'm not so sure if I believe that, but I know that that rumor mill has been going on for quite some time. Um, Donna says the feed was like one of those Kung Fu movies. Oh, that's funny, Donna. That's hilarious. And if you haven't seen one of those Kung Fu movies, it's like, you know, <laughs> like you see the guy's mouth moving and you're like, okay, the words don't match up. They don't match anything that he's actually saying because it was dubbed over uh, with English and the English just doesn't even match. Um, Perla says, why get forensics from overseas? Do we not have them locally? Well, they didn't say that they were from overseas. Um, they said supported by forensic specialists and a pathologist. Um, we're going to the BRAC on Wednesday. So I'm assuming if they could get them to the BRAC that quickly, that they were probably here on island. But I don't know. They they didn't specify where exactly they came from. But I think we have a pathologist. 
and we have um, supposed forensic specialists on island. Now, the only thing that I thought about is, is on the BRAC, do they have the equipment or what would they take with them to carry out their investigations? Um, do they have the necessary tools to travel with? Are these things quite portable? I mean, I honestly don't have any idea. And this is why a little bit more from the police would be so, so welcome, I think, by the general public. Uh, Charlene says, I too would like to know what we have here locally. Child, only God knows. <sighs> um, good morning to Jan. Jan says, money talks, BS walks. Yes, Renny, hopefully, hopefully it's a little bit better for you. Let me know. And um, we'll definitely see what's going on with our upload speeds. So, um, yeah, that's where we're at with that particular investigation. And so we'll keep you guys updated. You know, we keep asking the police for information. They keep saying, oh, it's being investigated. That's their standard response. They said the investigation into this matter remains open and under active investigation. The funeral for the young child will take place in Kim and Brack this weekend. This is what they said on Friday. And a large gathering is anticipated for this very sad occasion. Investigators continue to encourage anyone with information to call the Kim and Brack police station. That's it. That's it. That's all they've said. Bizarre at best. All right, Renny. Yeah, unfortunately, I don't think there's much more I can do. All right, folks. So let's move on to the reason why almost 500 of you are actually here. Y'all want to talk about some real sus. Um, Tracy says the BRAC doesn't even have oxygen. <laughs> Tracy, I'm not sure things are that bad in the BRAC, but okay. <laughs> Um, all right. So let's talk about this Daxter. What's his name? Daxter? Daxter Daps uh, situation. So apparently Daxter Daps is some um, Jamaican reggae artist. Um, I don't know if he falls into the genre of dance hall or not, but apparently he sings. I, I don't really know him and his music. He sings songs that make women want to take off literally their underwear. Mm, mm, mm. And uh, that's exactly what happened this weekend on Friday. So we had this concert on Friday. Uh, I did see it advertised around the place. Now, someone said to me, and I don't know if this is true or not, but someone said to me that the person who actually organized uh, the event um, is this guy. Hold on now. And like I said, I haven't been able to confirm if this is the case or not. But it would make total sense to me if this was the organizer, because this dude is so shady AF when it comes to young girls. And if you're a mother and you have a young girl, teenage girls, barely legal girls, try and keep them away from this guy because he has a track record like I don't know what. Here he is. Um, Vibes time. So here he is. FYI, Dex Adapts is brought in to perform by your little friend. Vibes time. You guys know we've reported on him on more than one occasion. And um, let's just say that, um, you know, these guys operate on a very different plane when it comes to the lifestyle that they want to live. If you have a young girl, like I said, that you're trying to protect um, her from being sexually taken advantage of, there are certain people on this island that you definitely do not want her working for, hanging out with, going to the club with, because a lot of these DJs and wannabe DJs and so-called performers, what they do and what they're into is uh, slipping things in people's drinks and then taking advantage of them. And a lot of times there's very little that the law can do because your child is not even going to remember what happened to them. Absolutely horrible. So we got somebody here trying to write in Arabic. We're going to just block you. Thank you very much, sir. So, um, yes, you know, you have to be careful. You guys need to be having these conversations with your, um, I guess, even boys. But, you know, boys are less at risk for this type of assault um, than the young ladies. And, you know, they just have to be very careful when they go out in public. But in this case, it seems like whoever Dex adapts is, he has the magical ability, as my 
as I start to cough. He has the magical ability to make people want to drop their underwear. Mm, mm, mm. So what are we talking about here? Well, um, this young man, and it's all over Facebook, by the way. What a thing for K-Man to be on the map for. Y'all love to, oh, we're going to put K-Man on the map. You sure have. You put K-Man on the map, all right. And um, probably not in the best way. But evidently, this is all over. It's gone viral. Other publications around the region have already picked up that a young lady decided to, and I'm going to show you guys some of the footage here, but she decided to um, take her pant. And the thing about it, unfortunately for me, I was not, um, so Angelita says that he was not, Vibe Times was not the promoter who brought in Dex Adapts. Thank you, Angelita, for correcting that. I don't know who was. I honestly cannot speak to this event. I don't know who was. Um, Mambo says they're wasted lives taken off their underwear. <laughs> And so, um, is it is it considered dance hall? Is he a reggae artist? I was kind of thinking about this. Is he a reggae artist or is he in the genre of dance hall? Because it seems like he does more like ballads to get people all hot and bothered and whatever in, in the reggae genre. I don't know. Um, best of the best promoting team brought him in. Vibe Time was hired to do the promotion for the event. Ugh. Well, the fact that they would even use him says a lot about whoever the heck they are supposed to be. Lord Jesus, this dude. I still don't even know how he's here in the Cayman Islands. Well, oh, oh yeah. Oh, hold on. I remember how he's here. He got himself an anchor baby. Finally got some poor Caymanian pregnant. And now we can never get rid of him because he was working for years as a so-called promoter and didn't even have a work permit for that. He has a work permit for gardener for his mother's company. Boy, immigration, the slackness that goes on and you tell them about it and still nothing has been done, I tell you. Anyway. Um, oh, hold on a second. Let me, um, yes. All right, so um, for your viewing pleasure, in case you missed all the hoopla, I'm going to be playing some of this in the background. So I don't know who this one is whining up on him. And um, he might as well have taken his shirt off, my dear. But the gyrating and the whining and the dry humping is um, just shocking. Everybody had their phones out recording it because apparently this, this is what people enjoy. This is what people go for is that uh, these young ladies want to, I don't know how desperate their sex lives must be. Child, yes, please pull those shorts down because you shouldn't even be wearing them that short. Mm, mm, mm. Lord have mercy. Some, some of y'all left your house looking a little bit. Mm. Anyway, um, so, um, oh, that's my alarm going off. What's my alarm going off for? So, yes, what I would say is, um, you know, I, I would, <laughs> oh, this was a hot mess, y'all. Y'all just, uh-uh. So a big part of the show is actually young women wanting to um, <sighs> perform as well, right? And they do it, I guess, for the... I don't know. What, what, what are y'all doing it for? Can can somebody tell me? What's the excitement here? Okay, so here she is back for round two to wind up on this man. Um, does this help your reputation? Do you guys working, work in professional environments? Do you work in an office? Oh, and look, she got competition. Here comes the next one with the pound by the, the hair by the pound, and she's going to wind up and, and kick her off the stage. And oh, my God, poor him. I don't even know if, does a man really get excited by this? Because he does this all the time, right? And I'm assuming uh, this probably isn't, this is just part of his performance and he doesn't really care. But then she jumps on him. He can't, he can barely hold her up because she's, you know, not the slimmest in the world, but he, he looks like he's, he's, I'm giving you all a blow by blow for a radio audience who are like, what is Sandy watching? So yeah, he couldn't hold her up too long, honey, because she should be in the 50 by 50 club with the rest of us. <laughs> Woo, no, sir. So you see people, um, you know, definitely um, mm -hmm. recording. And there's so much, so many more to come. Um, we have video footage of quite a few. Let me see if I can add in some more of these here. Uh, yes, honey child, y'all just. Um, <laughs> Oh. 
All right, I'm going to mute it and just allow you all to watch it in the background. Um, at some point, he was wearing a jacket. Poor fella had to take the jacket off, sweating profusely because y'all women were gyrating on the man. Now, I want you to watch this video, right? So you see the young girl and you'll see her on stage. Uh, she's very, very close to the stage wearing the red dress. See her right there? For those of you watching online, that's her. And she eventually decides to get on stage with her panty. Now, notice the whole time she does have the yellow panties in her hand. So I can't ascertain, I don't know if anybody knows her, um, if this is a situation where those were clean panties, I, I hope to God, or if they were taken off at some point during the show. I don't really know how that works, to be honest. I, I, I got to be honest with you. I'm not really into the whole dance hall genre, so I, I don't know what the rules of engagement are. Mm -hmm. uh, Vernice said too much tequila. <clears throat> Child, I don't know what they, I don't know what they be drinking, but um, yeah. So different women got on stage throughout the performance and um, they gyrated on the man and did the most. So um, I'm trying to see if I can find a few more. So yeah, I mean, Listen, the women, especially the ones closest to the stage, were going crazy. They were like fainting and it was just hysterics. Oh, oh, here's one. Yeah, she eventually gets on stage with him as well. So I don't know how many women in total uh, decided to get on stage and to have such a fantastic time um, by gyrating. And sometimes they will literally get on the floor and jump on the poor man. So there's one. Um, she was having a good time. And then, oh my gosh, they're like little kids, fanatical that they actually got to dry hump some man who's probably dry hump thousands of women. So here's another one. Um, she's going to get her wind down moment. And then here comes the woman in the white. Now she gets a little bit aggressive and starts to push the other woman out of the way. And, you know, the guys on stage are kind of like control, trying to control these women a bit. And, um, you know. Yeah, apparently there's competition that's going on here. Here comes another one. Yes, taking off her jacket. And she wants to wind up on him. Mm -hmm. Ugh, he's all sweaty. Ugh, chill. He probably needs a bath at point. So now she jumps on him and he can barely hold on. But he's like, all right, let's do it. Uh, who's the guy standing there in the shorts and the the uh, marina and the water bottles? He part of security? <laughs> so I'm not sure what his purpose is. But child, this is something else. She is spread eagle and he is dry humping her. And yeah, she's having a good time. Here comes another one in her, uh, what do we call these shorts again? Batty riders or whatever. Lord have mercy. Mm -mm -mm. Wow. There was a time in Cayman that you'd never see just a thing, but welcome to 2022 in the Cayman Islands. Like I said, for him, I'm sure it's just a performance, but damn, these women are like, it's like competition for them. Here comes another one. Can I just be honest? It's disgusting. I, I, winding up in a total stranger like that. Ugh. I don't know. Y'all have changed things a bit. So let's have a look now at the segment that has everybody talking. Oh, yeah. Yes. This one, he he acts like a rabid animal with this particular girl. Yes. Uh, all right. Let's pull that one out. And I'm going to bring the other one back in. So this now is the one we're going to look at it from a couple of different angles. So this was him um, performing. And at some point, you're going to see a woman in white. There she is comes on stage and she starts hugging his leg and she kind of faints away a little bit. This is a different angle. I'm going to show you guys another angle here in a second. And she has her, um, her pink rag in her hand. She gets super excited. There she is grabbing his leg and, and, you know, fanning herself. Now here comes her friend. This is the young lady in red. There she is. And as you can see, she tries to put the panty, the yellow panty on his, I don't know if she's trying to put it on his face or over his head or whatever. So let's watch it from this angle again, because this is a very different angle. So this is interesting. Here we go. 
So she tries to put it on him. He he deflects. I must say he has pretty good deflection skills. And he almost kind of bats her away and backs up. So she's never able to put it on him. And then my understanding is after that, she's actually escorted from the show because I guess they thought, ooh, that's a bit much. First of all, um, like I said, I'm not really, you can see that there's a bit of tension in the crowd because you see the reaction of the lady in white now who was just up before her. And then the other guys in the crowd pointing and stuff. So everybody's pissed off now on the crowd. Oh, look, they're bringing her back up on stage. And is this where they take her away? So she actually stopped the show. So now they escort her on stage and off the stage and out the venue. So, yeah, he wasn't up for the whole panties thing. Everybody's like, what? Look at people in the audience talking. Like, OMG. Bob Barker. Let's hear what they say. Hold on. So let's back it up with a little bit of audio. So this young lady was actually the showstopper, y'all. Hold on now. Let's see. Let's see what happens when she comes on stage. Let's get the audio going. So she causes a bit of mass confusion, but I want to back it up a little bit more because I want to see what he says um, when she does it, if he actually says anything. Hold on. Okay, did he just use the P word on stage? You see, this is the kind of thing now. Back in the day, you would never hear this kind of foolishness going on with a performance in the Cayman Islands because it wasn't allowed. Boy, we have turned from slack to slacker to slackus. Watch this. More oh, party. And let's see a time when we're done. See? So I can't sit no more tune, but we have come party. What was on? We just want to bless up to everybody. We saw that we're going to go early, but it's No! Here, I'm going to sell this from my heart. Thanks to the end. Okay, so that's the point where I was just replaying it because I wanted to hear it with some audio. So that is the point where she actually then tries to put the yellow underwear on his head. Now let's listen to the response and then we do have a caller who's on the line.
Hear this. She could you know, she just be eating her boyfriend. All right, so um, he escorts her um, off, or, uh, I guess security escorts her off stage. Uh, good morning, caller. Welcome to the program. Good morning, ma'am. <sighs> what a mess. How are you? Hey, well, but these things happen in New York every day, like the Caribbean clips on you and see. So why are you bringing these things out of New York and Philly and trying to pick up the pieces down here for us? You know, business with all that. Well, so, I mean, um, <laughs> this, this is, listen, there were a lot of people who... Um, that, 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 that's not happening in Cayman, though. What do you mean it's not happening in Cayman? That's what you're asking. Oh, you're asking me? Yeah. Well, this was Friday's show. A Friday's I, show? Of, at the Lions I just, Um, And what was that in, in need of? I mean, you know, who was, what was the show all about, blah, blah. Just the performance, perform. Um, oh, is that overseas, overseas artist um, performing locally. Right. Yes, he's a he's a Jamaican artist. Mm-hmm. Okay. That's okay, but but people, I, I mean, you know, people don't have any talent, but they like the um, they like the industry, so they got a shock. You know, it's a shock. You know. Mm. Uh, you know. Okay. And you know, came out of country without parents nowadays, so. No parent can say to their 14 or 17 or 18 or 19 year old, look here, you don't need to go up. They know that not gonna stop them from going, but they heard what you said. Mm-hmm. You don't need to go up. That's not that's not a good place for no young lady to be. Mm-hmm. Lady, 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 young lady. Mm-hmm. You use these words. Cayman so, is a country without parents nowadays. I don't know. I don't know how we're making it, but <laughs> um <laughs> mm-hmm. Um, you know, long time, really, really, when it comes to media and all this kind of thing, mm-hmm. and you know, about keeping tabs on, on the content, long time, and mm-hmm. I don't know who's supposed to really do it. I don't know. It might be my good friends over there at Off Reg, but somebody needs to be doing it. Mm-mm. Off Reg said it's not them. <laughs> it, it's not. <laughs> they, 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 yeah, they, they leave it up to. I mean, I understand that there was a time when, um, you know, performers had to provide some degree of like this is what's going to be done um, at the performance to to immigration before mm-hmm. immigration would even let them in. But um, mm-hmm. I'm guessing that has fallen by the wayside, and we just let anybody in now. No, but um, but but still, everybody, listen to me. It's the economy. It's the achievement. That's that bullion power we have with this dollar. Listen, my friend, we gonna shut this down early. Mm. You understand? You gonna have to pay back some money because we will be breaking the law. So we will create some legislation to govern certain things, and we will have policies in place. But you know. We always come up behind the eight ball, K Mayans. And what happens when you get behind the eight ball on the pool table? That's us. Mm. But think it is it's so entertaining. <laughs> yeah, well, that it is for some people, I must say. All right, my dear. Thank <laughs> you very much. Thank you. Okay. Bye-bye. All right, there. So entertaining, perhaps disgusting, definitely. Uh, someone can swear for the underwear. So um George said the panty was new. Thank God for that. Um, hopefully she knows what she's talking about. Um, CC says, Sandy, stick to your day and age lifestyle, honey chal. Because if I was there, I'd probably be getting a divorce. Oh, geez, I'm peace, CC. Um, you know, the thing about it that I find so interesting, um, her mother, Amelia, says, um, CC, you need Jesus. <laughs> um Tashika says, I heard someone say that it's worse in person, but to each his own. I don't agree, though. It's distasteful how women do things like this and then expect men to respect them. Well, that is for sure. And what is so fascinating and interesting um, about this type of thing is um, I'm continuing to to play more. Um, It didn't even after she was taken off stage, it didn't stop her friend in the in the um, the white outfit to then come back on stage and continue to try her luck. And it looks like these two are actually fighting over an audience of gyrating on top of this poor man. 
Um, what is so incredibly interesting is after the story went up, one of them, I'm not sure who it is. I don't know if it's the one in the white or who had the audacity to message CMR and said, um, oh, can you take that video down because I'm in it and I'm not the one with the panty? I was like, are you kidding me? Have you lost your marbles? Because you go to a public event with how many people you think were there? Thousands of people. And everybody has a camera. Everybody's recording. And we grab one of the recordings and share it. Now, all of a sudden, oh, you're supposed to be some pristine woman, probably with children and maybe even a man and a good job. And you don't want anybody to see you. Well, you should have stayed your behind home or acted normal at the concert. And I don't know if this is normal or not. Um, You know, y- y'all have lost the plot. Garrett says they were not even dancing. It should have been stopped. Dorothy says, where's the security? These women uh, couldn't, could have been under some alcohol or they were high. They overdid themselves. Well, this is the norm. He was at a concert in the um, Bahamas recently. And it was the same sort of behavior. You know, one I only saw one woman at that concert. So I don't know if, <laughs> if the Bahamas only had one woman brave and stupid enough to do it. Uh, Anthony says, honestly, it's a part of the Caribbean culture. Is it really? This is Cayman culture? Because, you know, every island has its own culture. So I don't know anything about this, but y'all have to certainly bring me up to par. Mm -mm. Um, Cece's blaming her mom why she didn't go. Thank you, Amelia, because Cece did not need to be up there embarrassing herself and ending up all over CMR for this kind of behavior. Oh, my gosh. So Oddly says, isn't it the same as Badabanu except for the yellow panty, all the wine up? Yeah, I mean, I think the Badabanu and all the, all the um, what do we call them now? Um, what are they called? Ugh, they're not parades. They're... What are they? Gyration fest? That's not the right word. Hold on. Yeah, they're pretty much all the same. Um, you know, and they're they're, a, they're on a public road. But <laughs> y'all, look at this. Look at this woman. Oh my gosh, what the heck? It's like the girls are competing for who can be the sluttiest on stage. All right. Well, I don't know who got the award, but there you have it. Look at that. Mm -mm. Are all these women single? Because if they've got boyfriends and husbands. Uh, Cindy says, ooh, honey child, Sandy, you know I love you, but hot cake. But you curses when you snap too, child. But he's not snapping. I told y'all already, my mouth don't join church. I don't got no problems with that. However, I'm not singing and performing on stage, cursing, carrying on. That, that, that's, not, that's not the right, that's not the same situation. And yes, if I have a moment, I might drop one or two bombs on y'all, but you know, <sighs> Lord have mercy. I don't know what to say. Cece, it's just not the same. <laughs> I'm still over here shaking my head. Like, what am I watching? My poor eyes. Ooh. As far as Russia's military Oops. power goes, this is. My poor eyes are burning me from what I had to witness. No, sir. But y'all, like I said, y'all like it. Y'all enjoy it. You're here for it. You see nothing wrong with it. He posts that up on his um, social media from uh, that was live from the event. So there you go. Y'all are into it. I must tell you that, uh, and he's not a bad looking guy. I mean, he looks all right, I guess. Um, but yes, the morality has definitely slipped a couple notches in terms of what you're willing to do in public. There's certain things that I think you know, if you're into that sort of thing, keep keep it at a private party or something. Even then, just you and your significant other, like on a public stage, it's just too much. Uh, Liliana says, shameless women and no common sense at all until Cayman immigration be cleaned out thoroughly. This low class artist shouldn't even be allowed to perform publicly. Uh, this is not Jamaica. It's the Cayman Islands. Well, the interesting thing about him is I can see where, you know, this is obviously, I guess, what he is into and what he encourages and whatever. And it's part of his act, but the women really just need to stay off the stage. Like there should be some sort of rule where you don't get on the stage with a performer. 
So leave it up to him to do his show. And if he goes, you know, a bit overboard, then that's one thing. Um, but, you know, I think these women were really the ones who were completely out of control. Uh, Angelita says this video even made it on the West Indian page, made, made up page, and people outraged that someone would do such a thing. Well, I'm glad that we're not the only ones who are thinking this is really crossing the line and a bit disgusting. Andrea says the panty was premeditated. Um, Vicky says church will never be full like this. Well, Vicky, I don't know about that because these same people probably jumped up yesterday and went to church, honey child. They need some extra dose of some holy water, some extra blessings. Mm -mm. No, sir. Uh, Anthony says, K-Mass, Badabanu, Pirates Week. No, Pirates Week, not like that. Mm -mm, stop it now. Every carnival, you see it there, not mixing anyone up. No, no, no. I, I wouldn't say that Pirates Week does this sort of thing. Um, pirates might walk down the street dancing a little bit, but no, they're not. No, no, no. Um, the carnivals, yes, that's part of carnivals being as scantily clothed as possible, wearing the least amount of clothing, and rubbing up on anybody, and drinking and having a good time. Um, Flashpoint is wondering again about this the <laughs> cleanliness of the underwear. Uh, he said the woman should be arrested for assault. Well, that is an assault, and y'all should know that if he wanted to do something about it, which I'm sure he's not, uh, he could have. But um, the young lady is only 20 years old. She's originally from Banaka. Now, y'all are going to laugh at this. You're going to think I'm lying. But guess what? She was actually some kind of beauty queen or something. Um, according, according to our sources, she won some Banakan coconut queen or some foolishness. Um, let me see here now. Sharice Watler, Bernaka's Miss Kunk Festival Queen 2019. Something wrong with y'all booty, uh, booty queen. <laughs> I, I think that may have been a Freudian slip. Something is wrong with you all beauty queens, not booty queens. Although that may have actually been the best word in this situation. But anyway, um, Andrea says that's why bun kill on a imagine the MSN nasty to a wine. Uh, the artist is nasty, says Dorothy. I wonder if he has a mother or sister and the fans were his kind. Listen, this isn't anything new in terms of a shifting of what we import and what we're into, right? Now, somebody mentioned earlier that country, there was some country music star when he was here. I don't know if it was here or where he was. People were throwing their panties at him too. I guess people get a little bit crazy and fanatical. But I must say that what is changing and what is becoming popular and normalized in this country, um, it's a noticeable difference for me. I don't know about anybody else, but it is a noticeable difference. And it's really not the sort of thing that I would be welcoming. You know, I, I see it all the time. You guys have the boat cruises and whatever. And I think that we are, we have adopted a subculture and we all have to be honest. Yes, it's coming from Jamaica. There I said it because y'all like, oh, is Sandy going to be blaming Jamaicans for this? Well, I'm not blaming anybody. I'm just telling you where it's coming from. It is coming from Jamaica. And you know, there's a TV channel um, in Jamaica. I forget what the name of it now. I'd have to go and look it up. But I only know about it because um, I have access to this streaming service. And on that channel, all they do is show like video footage from concerts around Jamaica, dance hall concerts and whatever. And at one point, I actually had to request that the channel be moved into the porn section because it was under the Caribbean section. And the couple of times that I would click on it, it was literal SEX in public at these concerts. And when I say literal, I mean literal on stages on the ground at some hoedown dance hall event in Jamaica, Sprawl Eagle, the, the performers and different people in the audience, I guess, having orgies and sex with each other. And sometimes you would see like the other people just stand around going, oh, can I get a turn next? It is disgusting is not even the word. And I'm like, why is there a porn channel in the Caribbean section? But, you know, the people who manage these things, they didn't, they don't watch the Caribbean section, first of all. 
And they didn't realize what it was. And I said, y'all need to move this. Yes, it's a Jamaican channel. And I did not even realize that this was a type of thing that, you know, was going on uh, at these events and whatever. But this channel, all it does is show this sort of thing. And it is straight up pornography. And I'm like, you can't leave this as an unlocked channel. You need to move it into another section. And that's that perhaps in a certain subculture within Jamaica is the norm. It's shocking because Jamaica has like the most churches of anybody in the world. And yet the duplicity is it also has the worst crime rate in the world. I mean, clearly y'all going to church ain't helping you one iota. Um, so I don't know. It's just unbelievable. Boom Flick says, sorry, miss, I have parents. Uh, Cece is defending this foolishness. She says all the song, 10, 5 cent, 10 cent, dollar. That was straight up slackness, especially the part dollar, dollar, dollar. Um, I don't even know what that song was about. Uh, Andrea says, preach it, um, CC. Old Calypso songs were nasty. And I'm not saying that they were, but they were nasty, like in a different kind of way, I think, right? So when the song about Sandra, you Julie Mango and whatever, yeah, we all know what he was really saying without coming out and saying it. Now it's so overt. Y'all got me choking up in here. Mm. Now there's no more <clears throat> letting your imagination go wild because <clears throat> a lot of those songs had more than one meaning, right? It wasn't... Um, you know, the F bomb and the P bomb and all these other bombs that leave nothing to the imagination whatsoever. <clears throat> so Sasha says, um, all of the Soka songs have strong sexual overtones and women and men seen women and men are seen dry humping down the whole West Bay road in front of children. And that's why I don't think children should be going to these carnival events because I don't agree that that's appropriate for children to be watching. And unfortunately, because it happens in public, um, you know, children do get exposed to it. And a couple of years ago, there was something that went viral in CMR where we showed a young child, an adult woman winding up in a young child. And we're like, this is completely inappropriate. And this is what happens, how you normalize inappropriate sexual behavior with children. And then you set them up for things far worse happening for that to them and they don't even recognize it when it's happening because, oh, they're used to women winding up in them. And then if they start to be sexually abused, especially little boys, they think somehow that that's okay and that's normal. You got to be careful what it is, uh, folks, that you're going to um, normalize. And, uh, you know, again, when children start to pick up on these behaviors and we wonder why they're out there at nine years old having sex, uh, you know, take a look at exactly what you are exposing them to. Because if this is what they're seeing on a regular basis and whatever, and I've seen some of the videos come out of certain places, I mean, it's just shocking, unbelievable. And some of them know the words of these songs and they'll sing them and all sorts of thing. I mean, it's just absolutely ridiculous. In this case, Panty Gate um, woman is of age. She's 20 years old. So I guess at the end of the day, you know, she can she can do that if she wishes. But listen, Pantygate lady, do you have a job? I'm sure this morning now your coworkers are looking at you like, what did you do this weekend? You also have to think about living in such a small um, community, the impact that it has. Debbie says, can you imagine if this occurred at the LGBTQ event? The CMA would have shut it down in full force. Of course, the police would have arrested everybody. The organizers would have been thrown in jail. And this is the double standard. Um, you know, the LGBTQ parade has very, very stringent things in place. They tell you, you know, you can hold hands walking down the parade route in solidarity with each other, but no, no dancing too much, no gyrating, no nothing, because heaven forbid this so-called Christian society might get a reality check. And yet when you see this, you understand the duplicity of what is going on in this country. It's okay for certain people to do it and not for others. So uh, Rosine says, but honestly, this is not the first time you have artists such as Spice and more that even dance with him 
but I guess it's the stage performance. Yeah. And I, I get, I get it that this is, I guess, part of the entertainment for people. I'm not sure what exactly is entertaining about sluttiness. Perla says sluttiness is the word for this stupid behavior. Yeah. I don't know why that's entertaining. I mean, it, it verges on public indecency, not verges. It is publicly indecent. And this is the same country that doesn't let a woman supposedly walk down the street with a G-string and still bans like certain books from being read in this jurisdiction. Huh. Just seems so strange. Uh, Natasha says, no, it's not. Have you ever been to any concert overseas or even a rock or R&B concert? The stage is us usually littered with underwear. Uh, unusual for K-Man, but it's not, it, it is not normal. Or it is not, not normal. Um, yeah, but do you normally have people going on stage doing this? I mean, or do they just throw, in, throw it on stage? I don't know. It, it, I don't know what else to say about the situation, except um, it's a hot mess. So family memories says illegal. Who's running immigration? Run the country. Uh, Debbie says this is not Cayman culture. Loretta says no morals for themselves. Very shameful. Shake my head. Good morning, C.E. Banks. How are you? Everton says at the end of the day, these young ladies running around sneaky cannot find a good man to get married and have a family. But who the hell would want to be married to people with such behavior? If you don't respect yourself, how do you expect man to respect you with that kind of behavior? Mm -mm -mm. Family Memories is wondering if the office of the premier will see this. Oh, God, poor Wayne. He's, his eyes might be ready for this kind of hot mess. Um, but I'm sure he's heard about it. And again, you know, immigration doesn't seem to be um, having the same standards that they once had. That's all I can tell you. So Andrea says it's the Caribbean culture and artists nowadays just have to do what they have to do to earn their living. Okay. There's nothing compared to soca and carnivals. Therefore, you all dance to the various songs with suggestive acts. Don't be classing us in that category. Talking about you all. No, honey, chill. Uh, Cece says adults do what they want to do. My mama can't beat me no more. What What is you saying? <laughs> if I want to take it to the, to the owner, I'm going to take it and shake it. Lord Cece. Try to remember especially when you have children, that these things can bring embarrassment, not just on you, but on your family. Uh, family uh, Memory says, thanks for sharing this as to what the premier can do about it. I don't know that he can do anything. This is probably maybe an immigration matter at best, public decency, but you know, the police are probably all there dancing and having a good time too. They're probably enjoying the show. There's a lot of slackness that happens here. I'm not necessarily surprised by the slackness. I'm surprised sometimes at how the slackness plays out and the lack of any meaningful response to it. So Darius disagrees. He says, good morning, Sandy. This is not a Caribbean thing nor a Cayman thing. This is a groupie mentality. The less security the stage has, the more wild the groupie acts. And this goes for all genre of music. Like, I think that there should have been maybe just how they had the stage set up, a way to discourage people from getting on stage. Because as soon as you have one, you guys saw what happened. You had one young lady come up, then it becomes a competition to see who can act the sluttiest in the moment. And um, they all start to compete with each other. And, you know, I'm sure, yes, they probably had a few drinks and whatever. Uh... So Cece says she sees nothing wrong with a little bump and grind. Listen, Slack has been around a long time. What a mess. Cece, take your mother's advice and start going to church a little bit more with her. <laughs> Tracy says this is terrible. This girl got carried away. Tell me any of you never done this. You know, if this was in any other country, this would not be escalated to this point. If someone did this at a concert in Toronto, she would have been escorted, but not splashed on the papers. Um, well, she splashed all over the internet, <laughs> even in the Caribbean. What country was it that carried the story even before we did? Uh, hold on a second. Let me tell you. The country that carried it first 
is a publication out of, oh, Dance Hall Magazine, which will reach tons of people, Tracy. So um, all I can tell you is the videos have gone viral in social media already. And this is the other thing. You're talking about splashing in newspapers. Newspapers have nothing to do with this. What these young ladies need to really be mindful of is social media. These videos are up. Nobody's going to take them off of Instagram, YouTube, Facebook. He has it up in his own Facebook page. And so um, you need to now be mindful of the impact that this has on your future. So Tracy thinks it's because Cayman is so small, things are quickly exposed and judged. No, he put it on his page and he has over 300,000 followers, 302,189 people follow him. So come again. And that will be all over Jamaica and the entire world um, who are actually watching that. So you can't, you can't control. Now she's wanting us to think about the panty girl. Child, please. She needs to think about herself. This is what shocks and surprises me, right? People are allowed to be stupid in public. And yes, I suppose you have that right. But then you have to deal with the consequences. Nobody tells you to get on stage and throw a yellow panty over a man's head. And you thought that was going to end how exactly? She sat through the entire show and waited until the last song, the last performance. She couldn't contain herself anymore. Um, when she did that, this is a man that one of his videos posted two days ago. And I'm guessing this is actually the one from here. Got 397,000 views, Tracy. You think anybody worried about what's on CMR? Oh, yeah, that's the one that we were just showing you. It's gone over. Oh, no, it's gone over to 402,000 views. Come on now. This is the 21st century that we now live in. So he posts up his own video on his own page. It has 402,000 views. Mm, and we must think about her. She should have thought about herself. Oh, God, Tracy's bringing the, the, the quote that I hate the most in the Bible. Let those without sin cast the last stone. Scarlet letter. Let him without sin. Everybody has sin, and some people have common sense, and some people don't have no common sense. If you go out in public and you put your sin out there for the world to see, then you live with the consequences. This is the same issue with Miss K Man. They love to do dirtiness in public and then want to pretend like they're so sweet. It's like, what? Well, you know what? You put yourself out there on a public platform. I have no mercy for you. It, it's, it, it is what it is. A couple of years ago, we had some young ladies in the club. Y'all might remember this. Out there performing sexual acts in a club. And everybody's like, oh, well, it was a private party. How can a nightclub be a pl private party? You got people everywhere with cameras because now everybody has a camera because everybody has a phone. So anything that you do in public. Remember the one who was in the bushes down by Everglow Bar? Was that another situation where they were humping in the bushes or doing some foolishness? People will catch you on camera. There's one that has been circulating. Um, I don't know where. Uh, I don't know how long it's been out there. But it's a man and woman engaging in sexual activity in public. And it is Cayman because you see the Cayman license plate. So for the last couple of months, I've seen that one in circulation. And I don't know why they were doing it in public. I don't know if he had a wife or she had a husband. Or maybe they both had significant others. And they were hiding out in the bushes, doing it, you know, in the back of his SUV. And somebody walked up to them, taped and said, what are y'all doing out here? Why don't you go get a hotel room? And so nobody, you, you can't put that one because that was straight up SEX. So you can't put that one on Facebook or YouTube because you'd get blocked. But it's been making the rounds on, uh, what do you call it? On WhatsApp. People have been privately sharing it. So I'm sure thousands of people have already seen that. If y'all don't have no standards, I don't know why you're asking us, Tracy, to, to feel sorry for you. I'm sorry, but that's just not how the world really works. Even the police have had to issue messages. Stop sending each other or sending other people naked pictures, you know, DPs. If you know what that means, you know what it means. If you don't, then too bad. All this kind of stuff is happening in our communities. 
Johan is asking, how is it even used? Johan, you again? What do you mean, how is it even used? Is it not happening in this community? Then it's news. We care about it. Right? It's just shocking. It's news if the police have to mention it, Johan, and tell people to stop it because they're having to waste good policing time and hours investigating these types of things because you decide to send a man naked photos and next thing you know, he's going to blackmail you or share it with all his friends and then it's a problem. It's news. Taxpayers' money is being wasted on these kind of investigations. When if you just had a little bit of common sense, you would know uh, not to send these things around. People have been blackmailing people from even back in the MSN day, um, Messenger, Microsoft Messenger. They would come on and you'd see a pretty girl there and she'd tell you, ooh, oh, Poppy, I like you. I'm getting naked and whatever. Men in the Cayman Islands were legitimately getting naked. And then they would record the whole session and then they would blackmail you because as it turns out, that was all a decoy. Not a young thing in Honduras was really interested in you, right? She was just trying to get you to take off your clothes. And now, so that she doesn't send it to all your friends in the Cayman Islands, you better send her $5,000. And some of y'all have been caught by these types of scams. Mm -mm -mm. Everton says, Cece, come on now. That's why people take this thing for a joke because listen to what you're saying. Cayman was never like this. The island changed rapidly because of young people behavior. Can't blame it on the islands. It's a culture that we're living in. Mm -mm -mm. Andrea says, don't work for their retirement. What? Don't work for their entertainment permits. Leave work alone. I'm not quite sure if follow that one, Andrea. Uh, Miss Sue says, we all love soca music, reggae, too, great times, dance all night, to no need for this, no morals now with them. Mm -mm. Well, you know, I um, think that people need to take some responsibility for their behavior. Anthony says, Pantygate, love that name. If you're not in a position um, to control yourself, you know, because some of y'all drink, and when you drink, all hell breaks loose, then, you know, I would suggest that you either don't drink, um, take a good friend who can kind of keep you in control, keep you off the stage, leave the panties at home. I mean, wear them. <laughs> and then if you have any extras, leave them at home so that you're not tempted to be walking around putting them on somebody's head. Uh, yeah, because she was using the panty as like a flag waver. Um, Minister Beckford says, come on, Sandy, you're preaching the truth. Well, you know, not everybody has to agree with it, but I think that our moral, our moralities have definitely slid down the toilet and it's, it's not a good thing. And there's a lot of reasons that we can certainly talk about in terms of why that has happened. But, um, you know, if in two days that has uh, over 400,000 views, that's probably going to go well over a million before it's all said and done. And then that's the impression that people have the Cayman Islands. And what will continue to happen is we will have more and more of these type of performers wanting to come here because they know that they can have a sold out concert, make tons of money. Because by the way, the tickets for this event were not cheap. All $60 at the gate and stuff. Y'all got some money and talk about you can't pay your CUC bill. Well, y'all sure can find money to go out because you're going to pay for entrance to the event. Plus, on top of that, you're also going to um, have to drink. Uh, probably a couple hundred dollars right there. Um, Andrea says a lot of people are dancing to R. Kelly. Not if you have any sense, because everybody knows he's a child molester. He was bumping and grinding and poor children. Thank God he's finally been put in jail. So it was $50 pre-sold, $60 at the gate, VIP tickets for $75 and $100. So y'all ain't got nothing to complain about when that CUB, CUC bill pays rules around. Y'all better pay the bill. 
Um, Mark says they were doing because the hotel went up after the island was open. Cayman doesn't have a Motel 6. I'm not quite sure I understand that one, Mark. Uh, Sharon says he's an entertainer who is performing, and I'm sure he doesn't use a string to pull them up with him. The blame should not be on him. Well, I think that his music, I guess, like I said, I've never actually listened to him, so I don't know. But I think he encourages the behavior up to a certain point um, when he's dropping certain words and certain lyrics and whatever. And um, obviously he doesn't discourage it because he actually does dance with them and does gyrate with them. So let me show you the one from the Bahamas um, so that you can see. Hold on. So you can see this one. So hold on now. So this is a woman in Nassau, bah Bahamas, and she starts to kind of just dance in front of him, but she's actually not touching him. And then look at what he does, okay? So when you say the artist isn't to blame, mm, hold on. So at that point, he tells her to turn around. She does touch him, and then he tells her to turn around. And then he grabs her leg up in the air. I hope she's wearing underwear. And then he starts to look, look, look at her, poor thing. She's trying to actually hold that short dress down. My God, seriously. And then he's grabbing her and doing his thing. So I don't know if I would say you can't blame him. He actually encourages this kind of behavior. I'm just saying, um, you know. This is part of his act. This is what he wants. Now, here's my thing. If, if this is your act and this is what you want, right? What you do is you have stage dancers and performers, right? So, I mean, Beyonce might get a little bit, you know, she can do all kind of jiggle, jiggle and whatever um, on stage, but she has her dancers and they might get a little bit close to the dancers. Same thing with um, Britney Spears and whatever. Oops, I did it again. So, but they have professional dancers on stage with them. They don't normally be pulling people on stage who are in the audience and encouraging this sort of thing. So I think there's a way to build barriers um, as a performer. Aretha says, who's wrong here? The girl or, or Dexta, I think that his platform encourages this from what I've seen. So from that perspective, you know, it is what it is. But ultimately, she didn't have to get on stage with him. So she has to take full responsibility and accountability for her own behavior. That's on her. He didn't tell her and he wasn't receptive to her panty situation. You saw he backed away and he was like pushing her off of him. Anthony says, panty gate. Has that name been trademarked yet? <laughs> Lord have mercy. Um, Soka says, I didn't miss, and obviously based on her name, she loves Soka. She said, I didn't miss a dance in Cayman and at no time was simulating a sexual act called dancing, nor did I see anyone take off their draws. Morals and music go to, gone to hell. And say what you want to say about soca music, but I would tend to agree with that. Um, people who were dancing soca music were not gyrating in each other. They were not sexualizing the dance. I mean, maybe some of the lyrics, like I said, might have had a double meaning to them. But yeah, I'm going to agree with soca on that one. So Bruce said, um, what would happen if a man went on stage with his underwear and tried to place it on the head of a female entertainer? Oh, Jesus, no. Um, Catherine, I think that's exactly it. Catherine says maybe it was her sweat rag. It was. She decided to take a panty as her rag, which is just weird and, and disgusting in a way. But no, Bruce, again, this is the double standard that we're, we're definitely talking about because I think the conversation, even the people who were defending it, like Cece and others, if this was a situation where the roles were reversed, just like Miss K Man, honey child, if that was a man going out beating at women, y'all would have a very different response to the situation. This is this is the unfairness now. We we talk about we want to be treated as equals, but really that's not what we want, right? <clears throat> Ms. Brenda says this is one of the strong reasons why the importation of poverty should have been nipped in the bud. And I don't even know if this is the importation of poverty. This is something else that we're importing. Because these people live 
honey child, they got more money than me and you to be spending on hair, nails, makeup, and these custom outfits every single weekend. Mind you, they might be stealing for the money, but uh, I don't know if it's an importation of poverty. So Johan, still here chiming in, says there are current MPs acting as wannabe mini porn stars that are dumb enough sending out videos and pics to their little tools and no skills. Oh, of their little tools, excuse me, and no skills. Well, how do you know that they don't have the skills? <laughs> you don't know that. Um, which was more funny or scary, yet the public don't mind as they know most in leadership roles are hypocrites. Um, uh, okay. Yes, I mean, politicians are no exception for being stupid, Johan. I think we can, we can all accept that for sure. Mm -hmm. Johan trying to throw some shade at some of these politicians, saying that they're mini por porn stars. And picks of their little tools. Mm, sounds like he's seen them. What a mess. Uh, right before the election, there was something in circulation. But, you know, I can't swear. When somebody shows me a picture of a man's private parts, I don't know if that's his parts or not. Because I've not seen it. How am I going to know? I can't verify that information. Now, the source of the picture, the video, has to be the one to verify. Maybe that person's spouse could also chime in and say, yes, that's him. Then she might have some questions for why is a picture of your man tools going all over the internet? Hmm. I don't know, honey, Chiao. I'm just saying um, there's no way for me to dissect that information. So unless I see a full picture of the head and the rest of the body, I can't say if that was him or not. Miss Debbie says, I've been traveling to Cayman since I was 19 years old. I'm now 52. And these things were never allowed. I'm totally shocked. These young ladies have no self-respect and they need guidance. Yep, I would say so. And it's unfortunate because, again, this type of thing will live on forever on social media. Daxter Daps, his page has been around since 2015. And, um, you know, he's got other things. Apparently, he's got a song, I guess, called Slippery and Wet. Oh, Lord have mercy. And he, you know, go to his page because he's into this sort of thing. Oh, my God. What a hot mess. Ugh. Ooh. He's got a woman all greased up on him. She's full of baby oil or something, looks like. Mm, mm, mm. I'm sorry, but this was never. Oh, some of y'all grandparents are now rolling in your gray in their graves. <sighs> When they see this sort of thing, he was actually in Orlando recently um, in New York and same sort of crowd. You know, they want to get on stage and um, pull up on the man. No, sir. Some of y'all are trying to pretend like you're flexible, too. Anyway, um, Anthony says, wonder how many NAU people were there. <laughs> you know, this probably would have been a great time for NAU to just stand at the gate and make some visual notations as their clients walk through the door? Because you know, you know enough of their clients were up in there, honey chill. Mm -mm -mm. That's like the poor one that's incarcerated for that Tortuga robbery. If she was in jail, she would have been there. I wonder if her husband was there. She would have been there too. Yep. And then having NAU pay to put food on her table. Jonathan says the man is a sex symbol for his music. Lord Jesus, what a mess. Mm-mm. Anyway, folks, that's all I can say about Pantygate. There's really not much more to say except pure slackness was going on at the Lions Club. Is anything going to be done about it? No. The truth of the matter is, um, you know, we've already adopted the slackness. It's probably too late to put the horse back in the barn. The slackness is here to stay. These are the concerts that are being sold out. This is what people like. And, um, yeah. They, you know, they still can go to church on, on Sunday and pretend like they want a good, decent husband and all this other kind of stuff. Uh, but really, the streets are talking that this is what Cayman is now. Welcome to the Cayman Islands. Hope you all um, enjoy your stay. Let's move on. Big shout out to Kevin Watler this morning. We're going to go ahead and play our news segment now. Um, Aretha says she was in the wrong. My view at no point. In time, a female should consider doing that to any male 
That was total disrespect to him and others. Keep that kind of behavior to yourself. Good thing he had a good reflex. Boomflix also said nobody seems to be worried about COVID anymore. <laughs> um, family memory says, Sandy, do you have a minor censorship capability to such news items like this? Censorship? No, we don't censor information. <laughs> if you don't like it, you just don't read it. Um, obviously, I wasn't there, but the videos are in wide circulation. Our platform's philosophy is very, very simple. We bring it to you. You don't have to listen to it. You don't have to read it. You don't have to take it in. Uh, you can censor yourself. So we leave the censorship up to you all to do, especially when it's a public event. Um, we don't believe in censorship, not at all. Regulate your own behavior and censor your own behavior is the best advice that I could possibly uh, give you. Mm hmm. Yep. The country is no longer capable of doing it. We can't stop anybody from coming in. Um, even the CMA can't stop people from performing who are not supposed to be performing. Somebody said to me, there's a guy who had stabbed a guy. Um, I can't remember what he's being charged with, if it's attempted murder or something else. But he was one DJ that stabbed another G DJ because they got all jealous and whatever um, over performing at a local bar, which he wasn't supposed to perform in because he didn't have a work permit for that. I think he works in construction. But nonetheless, again, total slackness going on in this country. And somebody sent me something the other day to say he was out performing at an event yet again as a DJ. And I'm sure the CMA hasn't approved him to this day to perform. But, you know, nobody is monitoring these situations. I don't know what the CMA does, but to be quite frank and honest, um, you know, they, um, they have a job to do. And if they're not doing their job and they're letting everything in the door, then there's definitely some concerns um, that need to be addressed from that perspective. Performers are allowed to perform Immigration works must know that they're doing it without the valid work permit, and yet they continue to do it publicly, and nothing is done. So this is the case of, um, oh, yes, they've, they've arrested him for attempted murder. This is the one that happened January of this year. 30-year-old Jamaican Saku Lichmore, a.k.a. DJ Mario, broke bad guns, arrested on suspicion of attempted murder after he stabbed another 29-year-old part-time DJ at the um, Everglow Bar and Seymour, Seymour Drive. And someone sent me just this past week a picture of this guy performing at another venue because he's out on bail, walking around with no worries in the world. And, um, yep, he is, let me see, this was sent to me on Tuesday. They said they're still letting him DJ after he stabbed up the boy by Everglow. Mario Guns, and um, there you have it. Proof on the viral cooler party, 345, that here he, there he is uh, performing, and everybody's saying, how is this possible? Where is works? <laughs> You've got the photo evidence. This should be an open and shut case, and uh, nobody seems to be about enforcing the laws in this country. That's why people... Do whatever they want. Because if there's no enforcement, then it is what it is. Someone on WhatsApp says, good morning, Sandy. John, John, Dwayne Seymour puts on those kind of shows too. Well, if we're going to let him in, I guess everybody's in the business of making money, including John, John. He's like, why not? Slackness all the way around. Mm -mm. Hot mess. Um, another person says, good morning. Can you please find out what's going on with the buses for CHHS? As it's been two mornings now that they have not picked up children on Friday morning. And I had to carry seven children to Northside. And now this morning, my son messaged me at 840 to say that the bus still has not collected them. Oh. Find out where. Has, has the bus forgot that they need to get back to work what a mess 
Uh, someone else says, and many paying that entrance, getting NAU assistance. Um, another person says, soca music, if that's what you want to call it, causes these people to dry hump is just as graceful to legends of our soca history. Preach it. Yeah, that's not soca music. Um, this person, a 70 something year old, came out and says, blame DCI and works. Why did we allow him here? He's known for that. It's not our culture, it's a Jamaican culture. Stop calling them ladies. They don't qualify as ladies, more like trashy. <laughs> You're right. We're not used to that. And no one danced um, like that. Well, some of these ministers might have been there enjoying the same as they did for the last celebration. Well, you know, the people we elect certainly reflect us as a community. So I wouldn't say that they were any better than anybody else. This other person says you either have class or you don't, slackness. Hmm. They also ask whether the race and organization can arrange with Health City to have their ambulance at the track on an official race day. It's a good question. While Dexter's lyrics are slack, but he performs all over the world and no one ever tried to put panty on him except in Cayman. That was one observation. Well, I mean, I don't know if it's ever happened before. I certainly can't swear for it. Um... Okay, so one person says, the art of double entendres and Calypso and Soka was just that, an art. The songs these days are straight up erotica. Good morning. Keep me anonymous, please. <laughs> double entendre, meaning two meanings. It was cheeky and covert. Yes, I know what a double entendre is. And those of you who don't, now know yourself. Um, read my comment. Okay, so CC wants his comment read. Miss on the phone, go to church, go in church and pray for your soul. God, and I ask you about ours. Y'all old folks will not make us younger generation feel like we bring slackness to light. Because back in the day, that was the definition of slackness. When y'all husbands went to sea and come back and somehow y'all are pregnant. A lot of sharing went on back then. Um, to Cece's point, uh, Yes. There, slackness has always existed from, from the beginning of times. Public slackness was a different thing. So although behind closed doors, y'all were fornicating and having sexual relations with your brothers, um, with your sister's husbands, and, and a lot of times even having children with them, because some of y'all double first cousins on both sides of the family, and there's only one way that could possibly happen. So yes, that was happening, Cece, but this is a very... <laughs> Listen, that's wrong on all fronts. I'm, I'm not saying that that's right, but two rights don't make a wrong. Public displays of what is happening now, it's like, where does it stop? Because the next, the next logical step is um, orgies on these stages and sex. And then, you know, 10, 15 years from now, you'll be sitting down saying in your older age, I remember when all they used to do on this stage was dry hump. Came on, gone to hell. Yeah, but it, morality is like a sliding scale. The more you accept and you allow pass through, the more is going to come through and the more is going to happen and just keep snowballing. So whilst I agree with your position that slackness has always existed at some level, this type of public slackness could have never gone on back in the day. You were still wearing skirts down to your ankles. Although when you were behind closed doors, you might be pulling them up. You still had that much respect, at least in public. You know, and you were trying to hide when you had a baby out of wedlock or nobody knew that that was your child, your sister's husband's child until DNA came into play. Or if the child really looked like the husband a little bit too much and people are like, mm. so yes, yeah, slackness has always existed in some form or another. And if you believe in the Bible, my gosh, from the very beginning, there was adultery, adultery and fornication in the works. But that doesn't mean that you have no, no degree of morality. That doesn't mean that you just throw open the windows and the doors and say all goes, it doesn't matter. And I think that's probably the difference here. And it also doesn't mean that you accept the behind the door slackness that was going on either. Right? But Cayman has always been a society that hid a lot of its dirt and pretended like it didn't exist. And yes, the same people who were going to church on Sunday by Sunday evening out gambling, buying numbers, and you know, calling and WhatsApping their significant others who they're not supposed to be with. 
because they got a spouse or whatever. So yes, we get it. That slackness has always gone on. Is that an excuse to allow the slackness, you know, roller coaster to continue? No. This person says, good morning, Sandy. How about a mother who took her 15-year-old daughter to the Dexter concert? I have a photo that someone sent me with the headline, but I would like to stay anonymous, please. She was wearing a halter top and a mini skirt, plus she had a tattoo from 14 years old. Wow. Again, you know, people want to talk about the slackness. Oftentimes, you just have to look at the parents um, because certainly, yeah. That's that's where it, where the box begins and ends. That's really, really sad because no underage child should be at this kind of a concert. I don't care what it is. We recently had a young lady go missing. And it was sort of interesting. She's now been found, apparently. Uh, she was in the in the girl's home, but they returned her to her father. And I guess he's responsible for her care. Clearly, he doesn't seem to be able to handle the situation. And, you know, I had people messaging me saying, oh, you know, she's at her boyfriend who's a drug dealer's house located in so-and-so and the police can just go find her. I'm like, wow. So um, other people familiar with her says she's she's on cocaine already at 15 years old. And I'm like, okay, her father doesn't know this? Say what? Mm, mm, mm. Sorry, the, the cough is still kind of with me a little bit. Oh, it's my sinuses, but yeah, I'm like, you're supposed to be the father of the child. And everybody's talking about the child's on cocaine and you don't know, but she lives in your household. Come again. And her boyfriend's a drug dealer. Jesus. Somebody else says, unfortunately, we have a lot of women, but the lady pool has diminished. <clears throat> um, this person says begging for attention never been told the true value of love and the worth of their bodies and self-respect. It's the product of having the internet raise a child. <clears throat> and I guess even social deviance has its limits. Another person says, good morning, Sandy. I watched this demonic thing, Dexter Daps. My God, this is frightening to say the least. Where in the world are these people, where in the world all these people come from? They should, this should have never happened. Immigration and every authority here is a joke. Well, <laughs> they come from Cayman, Joe. Right here in the Cayman Islands. Mm -hmm. So um, in terms of vibes time, someone says he now has two anchor babies. He has a young son by the girl in the picture. Oh, he has a new company called Ticket Plus. That's him. Yeah. One thing about him, boy, he got to hustle and find a way to work the system. Um, another observer says Dexta is what they call a Sing J, a, a Sing J soul dance hall. He also has a song about women taking off their panties. And so everywhere he performs, women throw panties at him. He must be getting sick of it now. It's hilarious. No, sir. And one observer simply says, nastiness. Mm, mm, mm. Well, folks, I honestly um, are, I'm at a loss for words uh, sometimes. <laughs> and so um, I don't know what else to say. Slackness rules the day. Let's move on. Um... Jonathan, boom, flick, say raw. Gents, get your boxers ready. Uh, Jonathan is going to put together Cardi B and Meg the Stallion concert. Oh, my God. Mm -mm -mm. Oh, my goodness. Andrea says veteran broadcaster from Jamaica, Francois St. Jude, died this morning. Oh, sorry to hear that. Um, Sharon says the Maguan like Dexter make them start. Yes, sir. Melissa says they've been cheating long before Dexter's song. Oh, of course. Nobody's denying that. Uh, family says talking about the ability of minors viewing this. Well, if minors have access to the internet, the parents are the ones who need to censor that. Media can't censor 
what minors do. And this is a very good point. I'm glad that you brought this up because, again, this comes down to parental responsibility. Remember the young man in the UK? They just took him off of life, life support. What was he, 11, 12 years old at the most? Um, he was participating in some sort of TikTok challenge or Instagram challenge or some foolishness and that putting a, a rope around his neck and, and basically strangulating himself. You cannot save people from themselves, ultimately. And you cannot save people from doing stupid things sometimes. So what I would say is um, the parents are the ones who have to put the necessary mechanisms in place to ensure that your children are being properly monitored. Every single thing your child does online, you as a parent should know. I am in the space of media and content production. It's not my job to monitor what your children do, <laughs> right? So if you care about what your children do, and we can see even from the other artists that went to the local school and then the school claims it was a mistake and some big mix up, all those children knew who that person was. To this day, I still don't know who he is. Never heard a song by him in my life. But your children, the vast majority of children at John Gray High School knew exactly who that was. And so that should be telling, very, very telling, about what these children are being exposed to and what they're growing up with. Yes, technology is there and it is what it is. It has a lot of positives and it also has a lot of negative elements. The good news is there are very easy ways for you to be able to lock down your internet and monitor your children. Y'all just give them smartphones and leave them to their own devices. They can watch whatever they want. And then you expect, what, <laughs> me to, to, to try to help you with your children? I can't help y'all raise your children. That's your job as parents. There are more than one way that you can do it. You can monitor every single website your child goes on on their phone. You need to lock down Snapchat. You need to know who's WhatsApping them because they got the pedophile coaches. Remember that? WhatsApping them? Remember the thousands of messages that Atto Stevens was sending to that young girl? You tell me, as a parent, how a grown, hard back man like him could be sending your child thousands of messages enticing her into sexual activity with him, enticing her to send him um, pictures and all sorts of stuff. You heard what the, what, the, um, what the judge said? The only thing he could really convict him on was the countless messages. He was like, the messages were unbelievable. Justice Wood at the time right? Says that it was gross indecency, inappropriate. And he said the use of that term was a grave understatement based on the actual messages themselves. Some of the messages are read in court. And it was shocking what this man was messaging this girl. Any right-thinking parent would have rolled up on him and boxed him down a couple times from messaging your child like this. But my question has to become, and I'm not victim-blaming here, but it appears that parents don't have a clue because your child could have access to a phone where a big man like a coach is messaging that young lady and you have no clue as a parent. You need to rein it in. You have got to do a better job. If your kids are more savvy at using the internet than you, then you got a problem because they will always be able to get one up on you. And these tools are how these really disgusting people get access to your children through the internet. And you have no, you think they're sitting down, they're doing homework in the evenings. They might be, but they also have secret pages open and all kind of stuff. And God knows what else they're doing. So all I can encourage you to do is to be more involved with your children if you really want to censor what they're having access to is be more involved with them so you know what is actually going on. That's Nobody else can help you with that job. I mean, there are tools that can help you. And I guess if you need a crash course and, and what to look for and how to do it, I suppose that that's entirely possible. But that's about it. 
Mm-mm-mm. Benji says music is music. What people do to it is their responsibility. Uh, Perla says, don't forget nowadays that kids can carry phones to school. Back in the day, we had to go to the office for a phone call. This is what I'm saying. This is exactly some of the stuff that y'all need to curtail. Does every nine-year-old need a smartphone? No. They just need a phone that can call an emergency number or the little inky dinky Nokia phones and call one way, but everybody wants to give them a smartphone. And with the smartphone comes the tools to be able to do all sorts of stuff, but you can put mechanisms on there to monitor your children and let them know that they're being monitored. (sighs) Family member says, absolutely right, Sandy. Thanks for bringing this to our attention. What's going on out there that we need to protect our children from. We're able to censor them closely, but um, be on them like white and rice. Yes, that's your job as a parent. And I would encourage all of you um, to really, you know, figure it out and figure it out quickly because yeah, kids are in danger. Did y'all see the one the other day and then we'll take, we'll break and end the show in the news segment. The little six-year-old at her house in the States goes out to take out the garbage and a total stranger walks by, gropes the little girl. That means grab her by her privates and then tries to kidnap her, then grabs her by the arm. Thankfully she was screaming and, and pulling away and ran inside the house. And her parents jumped in the car, chased the man down, and held him till the police came. Thankfully, now he's been charged with felony kidnapping, and hopefully he'll go to jail for quite some time. Uh, Darlene says, bye, Dexter Daps. Boy, maybe it seems you did a hell of a performance that a party was put on your, that a panty was put on your head. Did you get the chance to sing your song title, No Underwear? So he actually sings a song called No Underwear. Well, now it all makes sense, I suppose, why she would have even showed up with an underwear in her hand. All right, folks, that's all I can say. Um, (laughs) Catherine says, remember when kids had pagers? What a mess. Anyway, news brought to you by Kevin Watler. You guys have a safe day. We'll be back here tomorrow. Hello, I'm Kevin Watler, and this is your CMR Daily Buzz. Police have confirmed that the driver of a motorbike died after he lost control of his black Suzuki at the Parker's Raceway in Bodentown Sunday afternoon. A 28-year-old father of three, Kashreen McKenzie, lost control of his bike as he crossed the finish line. It was reported that sometime after two that he was participating in vehicular sporting activities at the Parker's Raceway when he lost control of his motorbike and fell from the vehicle. Eyewitnesses said he flipped some 70 feet from the bike. Police and other emergency services were dispatched and he was taken to the hospital by ambulance where he was pronounced dead by the attending doctor. Toddler Alicity Powell was laid to rest Saturday morning, a month after she was found on the Iron Shore in Cayman Brack. The tragic passing has left many wondering why the Royal Cayman Islands Police Service has not provided any public updates on the sudden death investigation. Alicity was alleged to have somehow gotten out of her house in the early morning hours of July 26th. Her mother put out a public appeal after she said she found she was not in the room where she last saw her after a diaper change. The Grand Court has thrown out a trial against Dr. Dalton Watler, the former Deputy Chief Officer for Tourism, who was arrested last year by the Financial Crimes Unit of the Royal Cayman Islands Police Service. Dalton Watler was accused of possessing criminal property concerning to U.S. $30,000 found in his home in Georgetown. On Friday, his attorney Oliver Smith moved a motion to dismiss the charge, arguing that the prosecution had failed to provide enough evidence and had not established any criminal activity involving the money found on Watler. Justice Marvin McDonald Bishop ruled the circumstantial evidence before the court did not meet the legal standard. Police arrested and charged Timothy or Timmy McKenzie for firearm and drug charges. According to the Royal Cayman Islands Police Service, Officers searched a residence on Kingfisher Street in Bodentown, and during the search, officers recovered two handguns along with several rounds of ammunition and a quantity of ganja. 
The police press release said a man and woman both 45 years of age of Baden Town were arrested as a result. The woman has been granted bail as the investigation continues. However, Timmy McKenzie was charged. He is an officer with the Cayman Islands Customs and Border Control and as a result of the arrest, the Director of Customs and Border Control has placed him on required leave. As the Royal Cayman Islands Police Service continues to remind drivers of the importance of engaging in safe driving practices and avoiding driving while under the influence of alcohol, staff at liquor license premises are reminded that they can refuse to serve highly intoxicated persons. Acting Superintendent Brad Ebank said over the last few months there have been an increase in the number of traffic collisions during the last weekend of each month which may coincide with paydays for many persons. The public is reminded that the current legal blood alcohol limit in the Cayman Islands is 0.100% and if you are tested and found to have a blood alcohol content at or exceeding this amount, you will be subject to arrest. Police continue to look for Luisto Eusebio Hernandez in relation to firearm offenses. He is considered armed and dangerous and should not be approached. If seen, call 911 immediately. The search is still on for two missing men. 53-year-old Noel Paul Manning has been missing since June 24th and 26-year-old Adrian Williamson has been missing since July 6th. Now you are asked to contact your nearest police station if you see them. The Cayman Islands was second on the medal table with one gold, one silver and two bronze medals behind Guyana with two gold and a bronze medal in the Senior Caribbean Squad championships. The one-week tournament was in Kingston, Jamaica. Department of Environment employee Sabrina Douglas became the first Caymanian to journey into Cayman Rice Trench when she made the trip in Submarine Alvin recently. Douglas, who is the daughter of a seafarer, took the two-hour journey as part of a research project with Woods Hole Oceanographic Institution, which is studying the deepest parts of the ocean. According to the National Deep Submergence Facility, which gave an account of the journey, Douglas found the journey exciting, but she was very focused on carrying out her duties. The dome on a Kearney Gomez Doppler radar is now being repaired from damage caused by Tropical Storm Grace. As of Saturday, August 27th, Radar images will be unavailable during the daytime while repairs are being carried out. However, radar images are expected to be available overnight. At this time, no time frame is known how long it will take to completely fix the issue. The Cayman Islands National Weather Service apologizes for any inconvenience this temporary disruption may cause users and promises more information on the repairs, including the estimated completion date and when it will aim to minimize the risk of future severe weather events from damaging the radar. The weather radar went offline last year due to a combination of issues related to the backup generator, the damage to the dome, and a failed radar part. Backup generator service was restored in June, and the radar was repaired in July by a visiting expert. We've posted more details of each of these stories on caymanmallroad.com. Now for a Storm Ready Cayman update, it's brought to you by Home Gas. The broad area of low pressure we've been monitoring will bring some extra rain to the Cayman Islands this week, but we don't have to worry about it developing as it passes by. Meanwhile, the National Hurricane Center is monitoring several other systems in the Atlantic. One of them does have a high chance of turning into the next name storm and is threatening our neighbors in the northeast Leeward Islands. Long range models do not show the system entering the Caribbean Sea. Remember we're approaching the time of year when the tropics usually become a lot more active. Storm Ready Cayman updates are made possible thank you to Home Gas. Now for your CMR weather update is brought to you by WG Charters. Sunrise at 6.09, mostly cloudy skies with scattered thunderstorms today. The temperature rises to the high 80s, but it will feel hotter than that. When the high temperatures at 87 degrees Fahrenheit and the relative humidity is at 75% like the forecast calls for, the temperature will feel around 100 degrees Fahrenheit. Winds east southeast at 10 to 20 miles per hour and the sun sets at 6.42. At nighttime, the temperature falls to the low 80s. Looking forward, this week will be on the weather side, so keep an umbrella or a raincoat with you. If you have any outdoor activities planned, be sure to have a contingency plan just in case. CMR weather updates are brought to you by WG Charters. They offer 
boat trips for a great price, and we encourage you to support them. Now, for some regional and international news. The Barbados based Caribbean Development Bank says it is supporting an initiative to implement climate adaptive aquaponics farming and strengthen micro, small, and medium sized enterprises in five Caribbean community CARICOM countries. The region's premier financial institution said it is expanding its collaboration with a program to enhance the capacity of small scale farmers in Antigua and Barbuda. Barbados, Grenada, St. Lucia, and the Bahamas. It said the increase in access to climate smart agriculture in the Caribbean will build the capacity for aquaponics enterprises and increase climate resilience in those countries. The FBI told the judge they expected to find evidence of obstruction of justice in a search of former President Donald Trump's Florida home, according to newly released court papers. Investigators said top secret files had been stored at Mar Largo along with associated newspapers and magazines. The Justice Department said it censored the affidavit to protect a significant number of civilian witnesses. Mr. Trump said the inquiry was being led by political hacks and thugs. California will ban the use of fuel-powered motor vehicles and require that by 2035, all new vehicles sold in the state must be powered by electricity or hydrogen. The decision was taken by a unanimous vote by the California Air Resources Board and is a groundbreaking step to transform the state's reliance on gas-burning vehicles that will have effects nationwide. That's it for now on The Daily Buzz. Thank you for joining me. Please stay safe and God bless. Thank you.